what we do here is go back, 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 back. see if this actually works. It might actually work, you never know. It appears like it might be. Good evening, Mike here, Mike's Unboxing Reviews now too. It is Saturday the 13th of August 2022 and it's freaking hot. So much so that currently here in the uh, the Mubtastic studio we are currently looking at 31 degrees and the humidity is horrible. Hopefully it's a little bit cooler wherever you are. Uh, because of the noise etc I haven't got any fans or AC on, so yes, it's uh, it's pretty warm. Uh, quickly, if I can, quick mic check, make sure the levels are okay, all that kind of usual stuff, and make sure you can actually physically see me. That would be useful. Um, yeah, let us know in the chat if uh, the audio levels are okay. <laughs> okay, Bob says, "Oh, look at the sunset glint off the sweat on his forehead." I know, I am literally melting. Us fat guys get that. It's a bad thing. <laughs> All fine, says lucky man. Thank you very much. See you and hear you. Okay, that's probably not such a good thing, but hey, hey. Uh, you'll probably notice in my new chair currently, which is a fabric chair, fortunately, not a, uh, a pleather or leather, because it'll just be sticky as all hell. So I'm currently in the process of testing out the Boolis chair, keeping my Boolis nice and cool at the moment on this fabric chair. It's actually really comfortable and it's nice to be able to sit here and actually sit back a little bit and relax rather than being on that little pedestal that I've been sat on previously where any wrong movement and uh, yeah, basically I'm going to be ending up flat on the floor. So yes, excellent stuff. Dutch Jan says sound and picture okay. Can you give a flash of your shorts to Uggs please? Uh, shorts wise at the moment I've just got black shorts on today, nothing exciting. So, um, yeah, just, a, just a little black number, sport shorts, yeah, from ShopSmart, ironically. They've got four stripes on them, so they're kind of saddy das, not uh, the real McCoy, but they're quite nice. But it's super, super hot. I am kind of melting here, I do apologise. Uh, I have a cool drink to keep me cool, hopefully. And also keep me awake. So we've got an iced latte here. Lovely jubbly. Courtesy of Calf, thank you very much. Um, O'Reilly says the only thing you need now is uh, Calf's hand holding a towel to mop up your sweat. <laughs> yeah, I need a drip tray. I need to go to the local pub and just get a drip tray and just attach it to the back of the desk. That would be awesome. Right, so uh, tonight's stream, we're just going to test out the, the new Elgato um, Camlink HD, no, Camlink Pro. So this thing's got four HDMI ports. Uh, the theory being 
Normally when we're doing these streams, I've got one camera, which is the one which you're seeing me there. Uh, we've also got the overhead one, which hi, you can probably see now, which is probably out of focus because it's doing my head in that camera. Um, yeah, that is why we're late to be fair. And also we've got the main, well, normally there'd be another input. So when I'm testing things, so like I've got this particular unit, which I've got to be testing. So this is the Asia Store NAS. This actually has HDMI output on it. So the theory is now when I'm doing live streams, I'll be able to quickly grab an HDMI cable, which is already plugged into the back of the capture card, plug it into whatever I'm testing. And then, so you guys can see it. So when I'm doing things like uh, builds, setting up BIOSes, installing windows, all that kind of stuff, it's not one of those last minute kind of crazy things where I've got to try and work out how to feed all these things through the different ports. The worst thing of all with uh, any form of capture, especially HDMI is USB. USB is a pain in the backside at the best of times. Uh, universal serial bus is far from what it is. It's a universal pain in the ass. And quite often if you're using more than one kind of hot USB device on the same set of ports to a controller, uh, you just end up running out of bandwidth. And it doesn't say, sorry, you're running low on bandwidth. It basically just doesn't work or refuses to acknowledge anything is there. So previously I was using a um, HD60S for my capture for the main camera and then a Camlink 4K for the overhead camera, both on USBs. And every Saturday evening, I'll be getting the, seams, the, seam, the stream set up, plugging in USBs into various ports until I actually got a picture. And up until that point, I didn't know whether, if the camera was working, whether there was a problem elsewhere, if I didn't have a cable plugged in properly or switched on. Many, many times I've got to the point where I come to flick the switch on a Saturday and it's like, I can't see anything. There's nothing going on here. So it's, uh, it was actually on sale on an Amazon warehouse deal. Normally the Camlink Pro is some of the reason about 300 pounds which is a ridiculous amount of money for a capture card. But if you had to buy four individual 4K capture cards, an HD60S is about £150 at the moment. So if you needed three or more, it's a lot of money, 450 £600. Even just buying two of them is going to be £300. So I figured I'm fed up of all this faffing around. I'll stick a PCI Express card in there. I don't have to worry then about, well, USB bandwidth issues. So if I do need to plug in the USB device to there, I can do very easily in theory, and also for HDMI, I can plug in things. Something which I haven't set up correctly, and I've kind of just, this has just dawned on me as I've started streaming tonight, is the fact that you should really integrate the, uh, oh God, that's plugged into a USB extension. That is why you heard that noise, because it just stopped working, I think. Let's see. No, it's still working, good stuff. Okay, so on the uh, Stream Deck, you can set up, it's got like a special integration with the capture card. So you can have basically four numbers on your pad. You press one, camera one, camera two, three, four, etc. And also you can do picture in picture as well, which is something which I haven't got set up for tonight. Um, I am gonna have to relook at this because the way I've got it set up now is there's various scenes all kind of uh, layered on top of each other, which is something which apparently you're not meant to do but it kind of, that was my work pattern. So when you're looking at the uh, overhead, which is what you're seeing now, this is actually taking the audio from the main camera and the main camera picture is underneath this picture. So it's like Photoshop, so it's basically all layered. So you don't have to work in that layered situation with the Camlink Pro. You basically just have one scene and then you use your switcher to switch between the various inputs which actually makes things a lot easier, but it didn't kind of dawn on me that that was how it worked. I thought what I was doing was a little bit clunky and I couldn't work out why I couldn't get picture in picture to work. And it's because I was basically doing it wrong, which happens. This is all part of the learning curve, which is why this is one of those kind of suck it and see streams, see what works, see what doesn't. Um, I want to try out some HDMI ports on the device. I've already noticed that I've set one of the scenes for laptop capture, which is for this laptop I've got in here. And when I switch to laptop, which is HDMI 3, if I click on that now, it's probably going to show the, uh, yeah, it's showing the overhead stream, which it shouldn't do. It should be showing HDMI port 3. But I don't know whether it's because there's nothing physically connected 
or there's something wrong. Earlier on in the day when I was doing some testing, uh, if I went to an HDMI port that had nothing physically connected, it would say Elgato, no signal, which is kind of what I was expecting it to do now. So as soon as there is a signal, it'll just appear. So I don't know whether it's because there's nothing plugged in. I literally don't know, but I'm sure that I've got it set up wrong. So I do need to take some time out during the week and actually go through, remove all of my streaming settings and probably just start afresh, which... So expect us to be late next so, week. So, yeah, so expect me to be late next week for sure. Um, got some things to take a look at in tonight's stream. Whether or not we'll get to look at all of them, I don't know. Whether or not the stream will actually survive long enough for us to do that, I honestly don't know. I am currently, technically at the moment, we're streaming in 4K, but I've downsampled it to 1080p. I was considering streaming in 4K, but I don't know if our internet will take it or whether or not streaming at a low bit rate at 4K would be worthwhile doing. I'm not too sure how that works, whether or not it would improve the image quality or not. I could stop. Maybe I should do that. Maybe I should stop OBS a second and see if that still works. Um, Maybe say hello first. Yeah, let's say hello to some of you in the chat first of all, and uh, I will think that one over. I'm tempted to see, it should, I should be able to, in theory, stream at 4K, because there's 4K signal on both cameras. So yeah, this should work. Because I'm just down sampling, so if I just up sample it, but anyway, I digress. So, Ordinary Nerd is with us. Uh, a rally. We've also got Paul Bakewell. How you doing, Paul? He says, hello, good evening, it's hot. It is 31.1. The temperature is actually increasing, which is not entirely unexpected due to the fact there are now PCs on that are getting very warm. Uh, Rick H, will I say doing Rick? Says hello to all the mubs around the globe. Hope everyone had a good week. Yeah, not too bad. I'm I'm actually stressed. Genuinely actually stressed. I've got a review to do for a embargoed product, which will be released on the 18th at 9 a.m. 16th, isn't it? Is it 16th? Might be. What day is it today? 13th. No, it's the, I'm sure it says 18th in the email. Okay. I hope That's it is. So I'm, I'm sure it's Thursday. If not, I'm really properly screwed. Basically, I need a case which will take three 120 mil fans oh, and Smith. not be um, overly expensive and potentially fit in my little cubby hole over there where my 4000D is currently, which is only just fit in. I don't want to use cases I've already used before. So I was thinking, well, Techware Forge L, that would do it easily. Um, actually, probably not a bad shout, but I don't really want to buy another one because I've been there, done that, so it's a bit pointless. Um, another one I thought of was the Corsair 5000D, which apparently doesn't take three 140mm fans, even though it looks like it might, it doesn't. They look awful. So the whole kind of thing of what I'm doing in the video would be irrelevant. So yeah, I'm not going there. So suggestions for cases that are relatively narrow, but will take 140mm fans up front, preferably three, Potentially one in the back. Worst case scenario, I'm going to be looking at going with a uh, Colink Citadel mesh in white because I haven't done one of those yet. I don't really want to go down that route. I'd rather go for a, like an ATX or a tower, but please, in the comments, I will get some eventually, but make some suggestions of cases which aren't overly wide and aren't overly expensive, but Did take three. Yeah, that I would, you would like to see a review of as well. Anyway, moving on. Yeah, I was thinking that, Uggs. Uh, Riley says, Mike, you should stream from a meat cooler. Keep you chill. If I only had one. <laughs> Ugly Bob's with us as well. Uh, Ugly Bob says it's fine. A bit of moistness never hurt anybody. Although, I think it, moistness did hurt my microphone during the week. I did a, a video on yesterday, in fact. And I was listening back to the audio, and I can't make out what the problem is. But it could be where I have my greasy fingers actually on the mic jack. So it's making like weird noises, possibly. Then we had the window open and the blind was the, win the windows, the windows were open. Uh, Mark Barry's with us, says good evening. We are melting in Dorset. Oh. The humidity isn't nice, it really isn't. It is a bit too humid here at the moment. Uh, Lucky Man says, hi honey, I'm home. How you doing, <laughs> Lucky Man? Uh, Ugly Bob sent a super chat, two pound super chat earlier on. It said disco, disco. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Bob. Uh, Matthew Day says that's a lot of inputs. Does it do more than one at a time? Yes, actually, if you set it up correctly, which I haven't, uh, there is in the listing of devices it says HDMI one, HDMI no, sorry, HDMI one, stroke multicam. So in the multicam options, you've got op various options for picture in picture. So you can have either all four showing like a CCTV camera sort of setup, or you can have picture in picture. So you've got like a main screen, maybe a streaming type screen, that kind of thing. There's various different options, which I, I need to take a better look at really and get it all set up and do it. Although it's kind of hard to do it without really doing it live because setting up a stream is one thing. Actually doing it live is another altogether and actually being able to control it. Uh, John Sullivan says, got the Elgato Stream Deck at work in our recording studio with the A10 Mini Pro. Took a bit of figuring out, but we got it all ready for recording lectures for our online teaching. Works great. The A10 Mini Pro, that's a really good uh, capture device. It is a little bit expensive. I think they do, A10 do a 4K multi-port card as well, which is about $600, I think. But, yeah. Something I'd like to look at it one day. Uh, Lucky Man says, even my sweat is sweating. <laughs> sweat cubed, yeah. It is the, oh, what was that film? Um, I'll say Insurrection, but it's not Insurrection, is it? It's the, what is the film where it was a dream inside of a dream inside of a dream? In Inception. It's Sweatception. I can't even say it. I'll give up on that one. Let's move on. Uh, Tony is with us. How are you doing, Tony? Uh, Nick Barnes says hi, Kath and Mubsters. Uh, great way to follow on from Greece. <laughs> uh, else else? Uh, Paul Bakewell says I'm sitting in the garden with a bottle of Stella Artois. It is so hot I may never leave. I wouldn't, given the choice. Uh, Mookie MC says yes, I believe it will allow four cams to connect for input, and then you can switch between them among the cams via software like OBS. Uh, you can use more than one cam at the same time as well. This is true. This is true. Potentially, I might need to get a bigger stream deck because this has only got six buttons. So doing the multi-camera thing might be a little bit tricky, but we'll see. It's fine. It's, it's doing what it needs to do, but I'm not sure if there's going to be enough kind of layers that I can use. Uh, da -da. Where are we? Ordinary dude, I think I saw just then somewhere. Where? I can see that, but he's not in the chat. I saw someone reply to him, but I can't see it. Uh, no, live chat. Am I on live chat? Yeah. Not on top chat. Oh, right. okay. Uh, let us with us, Mark Berry, a rally, the Freckle Puny. Rakesh, we said, Dutch Jan, how you doing? Signing pictures, okay. Nicholas Barlow, a letter says it's currently 24C here in Ohio. Wish it was 24C in here. That would be much more... Uh, appropriate for our climate and for my weight. <laughs> uh, William Bodie says, all day in a hot dog stand at 37.5C, now home 26.5. Very nice and good evening to you, William. Uh, actually, William, yesterday I managed to probably do almost half a bottle of Heinz um, curry sauce mango on my pizza. It was awesome. And on Tuesday, we had some chips, some pommes frites. So I used the pommes frites sauce. Very good. Angel likes it as well. Uh, Mick Word says, Hi all, tonight's uh, cool throat lubricant is Bira Morietti. I'm not sure. Oh, that's a lager, isn't it? Or a bit marger, lager beer, beer lager thing. Italian one. Metal Face says, Thanks for reviewing everything before we buy them, mate. You are the goat. Thank you. We try. We try. Uh, Rick H says, what about getting a ceiling fan? Well, we've got a ceiling fan, but to be honest with you, when you turn it on, it just ends up recirculating the hot air. It doesn't really do a great deal. Uh, Freka Puny says, I'm sure the heat has been causing my laptop to run too hot and crash recently. Does anybody have experience with a laptop cooler? Yeah, I've used a couple of laptop coolers. They're actually generally a good idea. Even if you can, just um, a stand, like a kickstand, which I think... Make sure I don't run over my cable. That is going to be the next thing, actually, upgrading my mic setup. Where is the kickstand thing? I've got a silver one here somewhere. 
Where is it? Is it in here? I reviewed it ages ago. It's basically a little silver um, like coated stand, so you just twist it around and it makes like a triangle shape. Really good for laptops. And it doubles up as like a, a protective cover as well. That was a long time ago. But a good little video. Didn't get very many views, but I enjoyed it. Uh, Mint Hawk's with us, says hi everybody. How you doing, Mint Hawk? Andre is with us as well, says hi everyone. How you doing? Uh, oh, Caf's answered that about the ceiling fan, thank you. Anthony Carter says hi all. Oh, uh, you on early? I don't think so. Probably well, a little bit earlier than last week. Uh, John Sullivan says, I think we've got the Camlink 4K USB version at work for lecture capture. The Camlink 4K, give it its juice, is really good. The one I struggle with is the uh, HD60S. It's so unreliable. Even to the point of I had to label up the USB port with a little white sticker. So I know even though it's USB Type-C, it refused to work with it round one way or the other. And I, did, I even looked at my own how to fix USB ports video. Because I typed in Elgato USB Type-C port not working. And it actually brought up my USB type C, no, my USB um, port cleaning advice, which was, uh, I just chuckled a little bit at that. It's like, I'm trying to get help, and all I can find is myself. <laughs> if you don't know it, you never know it. Anyway, oh, I didn't say the, um, the Camlink Pro, which I've got, uh, normally £300, I picked up as an Amazon used deal, and I think I paid 210 so in terms of buying two individual capture cards to do one or three capture cards effectively to run on different USB buses or something, yeah, it's, it saved me money. The fact that I was going to have to replace the HD60 anyway, or sorry, HD60S because the USB port is just disintegrating, that was going to be about 100 pounds, well, anywhere between 100 150 depending on where you buy it from. I could have bought a second hand one, but then potentially that's going to go wrong as well. So it's kind of like, well, do I spend an extra £50 and potentially get an additional three ports. I lose pass-through, which is something which is a little bit inconvenient, but for what this does, I don't really need a pass-through because I can see OBS if I want to be able to see it. I can use OBS Studio. Uh, William Bodie says, was that calf blowing a horn? Uh, no, that was me being silly with these Stream Deck things. So we've got gold, which I'm supposed to do when there's a super chat, which I always forget to do. And there's also the party bun when we get a new member but don't get a chance to use that very often these days <laughs> don't listen to me i'm being silly um okay milk's monsters with us as well i think i said that already milk's monsters says hey mike is there any benefit to have more f fps than your displays hertz frequency there isn't really um the only thing you'll find is it will f the game itself will feel smoother but potentially you'll get more um, <coughs> screen tearing, possibly, depending on the frequency of the monitor. If you've got a 75 hertz monitor and you run your game at 150, which is exactly double, that's the kind of sweet spot. So if you can stay within that region, so it's basically it's displaying two frames for every frame that it can actually physically do, there isn't much point in doing it. It does feel a little bit smoother. But potentially some people, depending on your eyesight and your perception of it, everyone's a little bit different. But you might find that it is um, possibly a little bit more blurry as well because you're not getting a clean signal, single kind of refresh per frame. Ideally, V-Sync on is the best way of doing it. Even if you've got a low refresh rate monitor, I'm tempted to leave V-Sync on where possible. It's down to the individual. What you're... I find I notice the tearing, and also it depends on the monitor. If you've got a particularly good monitor, which has got a very good uh, response, even though the refresh rate might be low, it might be a 60 hertz response, uh, sorry, refresh, if the response time is very high, then you may not notice that, um, that kind of jarring flickering effect. So it's kind of a combination of three things. You've got your FPS from your computer, you've got what your screen can actually show in terms of uh, refresh rate, and also you've got your response time of the monitor between drawing uh, a pixel one color to another. Wow, that's only very boring. Uh, Matthew Smith says, evening. How you doing, Matthew Smith? Uh, just some dude on the internet says, what's up? How you doing? Uh, Ordinary dude says, 1080p is plenty. Looks great on this end. It is actually, um, yeah, it is actually 
4K down sampled, so in theory it should look better than normal 1080p. Who knows? Uh, Matthew Day says have a poll who is 4K capable. That's actually an interesting idea. I'm not sure if I can do that on this particular screen. I think I can on the full screen version. Maybe I'll get Calf to do that. Uh, Welly Bob says try 4K, Mike. I'm, I may well do that. We'll see. Ugly Bob says it's getting hot in here, so take off all your clothes. I would, but I would definitely get kicked off of YouTube. Uh, Captain Meat says, hey there, you sexy grumblings. <laughs> I think I should have some grumblings today, because I haven't eaten yet. But everything feels okay. We're good. Uh, Maxwell says, hi, how you doing? Uh, Alessa says, my monitor is 1440p ultra wide. 4K usually looks a little bit clearer. Bob says, Haha, one in the back. I was waiting for that. I look. I didn't want to look over, when I said that, I didn't want to look over at Kath because I knew that she'd be giggity over there. Uh, Paul Bakewell says, question, have you got a new dog? I can hear one barking. Um, there might be one out the back. We, we live, where we live, there's lots of long, narrow gardens and you can quite often hear like, neighbours' dogs. We certainly don't. Uh, Orny Dude says the rest of the world is getting some of our Gulf South weather. Yeah, it does seem that way. Uh, right, let's get up to date and see what the deal is. Mazelstein, Lucky Man. Lucky Man says I was going to send you some of my birthday chocolate. Uh, lol, but may have been a little bit offensive with the wording on them. If it's chocolate, I don't care. I can overlook the word in. Although I'm still on the wagon, still not having uh, sweets, chocolates. Well, I did cheat a little bit yesterday, I have a little bit of one. But... Do feel a bit better. Uh, Mark Point says, Mike, I guess if I, I, Mike, I guess if Mike can't help you, then no one can. Yeah, it did seem that way. Uh, Amir says, hi Mike, hope you're well. I'm thinking to get that thermal take code P8 case. Was uh, wondering what fan RGB hub to connect or 17 Corsair QL10 fans or any ideas? Um, if you're using 17 Corsair QL fans, QL10 fans, there's not really a great deal you can do in terms of if you want it to work together reliably, realistically, you're gonna have to go with a, a couple of nodes and probably a commander as well. So actually saying that 17, I don't think you'll be able to get 17 all in one commander. You might need to get two commanders. So two commanders. You have six per channel. So 12, 18, 3. Yeah, you're, I think you're going to need an additional commander. Because I don't think the command... How many... No. Does the commander have four ports on it or six? So yeah, you might struggle with that. You might need two commanders I don't think they do anything bigger than the commander pro that's something I would have to definitely look into my head is hurting actually thinking about it that's a lot of fans could do yeah I could do with them yeah uh, Kenny Diesel says hi Mike and Kath uh, boy 4k says good day Mike how you doing uh, Lib Supremist says should I buy Old Lake now or wait till the new AMD chips push those prices down soon it's a very good question. Um, the way the world is at the moment, it's kind of almost impossible to tell. It really is. Thank you, Bob. Uh, kicking it off with a nice crisp tenor to mop your brow with. They're plastic, Bob. They're not absorbent. You have to send 50s. <laughs> Actually, no, they're... I think they're, even I think, I think they're plastic as well now, aren't they? You have to just go old school with 100s. Thank you. There isn't such thing as a hundred. Uh, going back to what uh, Amir was asking, says, com uh, forget the expensive commanders, cut off the fan cables and replace them with standard connectors. Uh, you could do that. You could do that, but then you lose the ability of having the kind of chase effects through the fans. Uh, that is something because of the individual channels that those represent. That is basically what the extra cable is for. So you've got your uh, RGB data, you've got your ground, power and then the other one is the kind of the positioning so that is something you would lose out on 
which I think would be a shame with that amount of fans, but it's definitely a uh, possibility. Uh, when I get to uh, Ray D, oh no, your message has been hidden, so you're a bad, yeah, well bad done. person. That's what I put my hand up, right? What's that? Oh, um, hi, hey Mike, check out this case, Fantex Eclipse P500A DRGB. Write it down, Calf. Uh, I thought you were doing it then and there. Oh. I don't know if I can. No, okay, don't worry. I'll write it then. Actually, maybe I can. Let's have a quick look. Uh, ooh, ooh. Can I open up a new incognito tab? New incognito. There we go. Let's go to Amazon.co.uk. Where's my keyboard? <laughs> there it is. I, was, I thought it was Tommy Cooper then. Just like that. Just like that. Sorry. I won't do that again. Uh, Fantex, how wide is the, the Fantex actually, the P500 is something which um, I think uh, Seema Knight on our Discord was suggesting a while back. Uh, P500A DRGB, 132 pounds, that seems a bit expensive, but if it does what I need to do, did I do a P500 without the fans? Because that might be the way forward. Failing that, I'm going to have to get a Cooler Master H500, which I think really want to do, but I may have to. Right, let's have a look at this case. Thanks for suggesting that one. Your suggestions are all uh, gratefully received. So has this got any of my personal details? No, that's good. Right, let's go to scenes and desktop. Blimey, it works. Oh, I'll tell you what. Let's get rid of, first of all, let's get rid of that. Yep, that's worked. Wow. Technology is just working. <laughs> Almost. Uh, desktop, right. Actually, can you still hear me? Yep, looks like that's working. So, Fantex P500A, the RGB, mid tower. Maybe take that writing off the screen. I have done now. Oh, cool. I think it's a, little bit, it's a little bit of a delay, yeah. So, oh, they do a non-RGB. How much is a non-RGB? 107. Now that might be just the ticket. Right. I like that. For 100 quid, I think that's pretty good. The front's a little bit odd looking. Well, we've got Type-C, yep. Yeah, that works, I like that. Two USBs, combo jack, not a fan of that, but still. Plenty of drive space in there. Can you put fans in the side if you want to? Or radiator? Uh, da -da, that looks nice. I quite like that. But yeah, I'm sure Seam Knight was going on about that. Give, give, giving all the, the lecture. Oh yeah, it's a great game, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Bless his heart. Uh, it doesn't show what you can put in there. Can you put a 360 rad in the top? It looks like you probably could. Although, having said that, the USBs do seem to cut into it a bit. So maybe a 360 rad in the top is out of the question. Not that I probably would want to, but it is always nice if you're going for a slightly larger case to be able to do that. Uh, anyone who's got the P500A in the chat, please do let me know if that is a, if that is a thing. Why does it not say on there? Actually, what dimensions? 24 inches wide, Ooh. Uh, 24 mil wide, that could be a problem. 24 mil? Uh, 24 centimetres, yeah. It's tiny. Can you put... Uh, extensive wall to current support, up to 420 mil radiators, but it doesn't say about the top. Uh, anybody say about the thing? No, no, okay. All right, let's go back to there. Let's see what the uh, ladies and gentlemen are saying. Has anyone actually said about it in the chat? Thanks, uh, thanks. I 
uh, Daniel's asking any thoughts on the new Asus case. Um, if, it, if it's Micro ATX, I haven't seen it yet. I might have to take a look at that one. Uh, Ghost Adder is with us, says hello. Just had my chicken burger and chips. Ooh, chicken burger. Another one that someone nice. said was Thermaltake S300. Uh, Thermal Take S three hundred. Isn't that small? Oh, here we go. Let's go. Let's go back. Thermal Take S three hundred. That might be Thermal Take. Oh God! If I could spell, I'd be lethal. Thermal Take S three hundred. Didn't I do one of those? Oh, I think we did. Yeah, solid front though. I'm pretty sure I've had that case. They all sound similar. Though. But that would, yeah. that would tick the box. If they did a, a, a mesh front version of that, it would be absolutely fine. I think I did have the S300. Or the... Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I had the S300 before. It was a nice case. Actually, no, it didn't, did I? I don't remember having the side bits. Hmm. Yeah, if they did a mesh front version of that, I'd be all over that. Okay, it's back to the mix. says 500A top up to 360 stroke up to 280. Top up to 360 mil or, yeah, 280, so in width wise. 500A. Right, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to order a 500A. Crap. I've got to send back the other case before the 15th. Oh. <laughs> Where is time going? Like I don't know. What did Ghost uh, says? I'm on the bloody screen. Use some sort of wizard mic. No. It's just, I can, I can install very basic plugins. Uh, Matthew Day says Sahara C501, uh, 3 times one forty. I did, yeah, that was a consideration, but I have reviewed that already. So I don't really want to go back and do it again. But that was, that was a consideration. In fact, that was one of the ones which I thought, yeah, actually, that's quite a nice case. I quite like that one. Uh... Lucifer says, I've got the NZXT H510 Elite. I regret it. The temps are terrible with this case full glass panel. Yes, that is, uh, yes, not good. Mook MC says, those uh, top connections on the P500A off to the side, so the room is there. Right, Pantex, I, I need to write that down. I've got it written down. Right, actually, just order it. Actually, it's not going to be shipped overnight anyway, is it? Right, I think we need a little bit of extra light now, Calf, if you wouldn't mind. What's the temperature? What's the temperature? It's 31.0 C, so we've dropped 0.1 of a C. Better, wait, Does that actually focus on that eventually? If I move my face out of the way, it might do. Does it? It hasn't. Mm -hmm. you have to so wait. delayed. You have to wait for it to update. I can actually look on here, couldn't I? Yeah, it's focused. Sorry, do you mean on the thermometer or yeah, the th shiny patch on the top of your head? Is it on the thermometer now? <laughs> is it on my face? Yeah. Thermometer? Mm, yeah. Face? Face. <laughs> stupid. I should do a camera review channel. That's how, that's how you test if a camera is any good, if it actually focuses, unlike that piece of shit up there. Sorry. Right. Montec X3. How many? A uh, Montec? X3. Okay, that's another one. I'll get Kaf to make a note of all these, the and uh, I will investigate them all. Ow! I'm getting bitten by things, like... I killed it on my leg, I think. What was that? A bit of a bug of some sort. I wish these things would stop eating me. Right, anyway. So, this week. This week in MUB. <laughs> what have we done? So, I still haven't done a review of this. This is a Locker Store 2 Gen 2. This is a, an amazing NAS, which 
most people don't like NAS. I don't know why. It's just a weird thing. It's a very niche market. But with more and more online skullduggery going on, especially things like uh, credit card theft and ransomware. Ransomware is like really, really rife. Having a NAS with your basically your life backed up onto it really can help out. Where this actually excels as well, because it isn't just a one trick pony, it isn't just a NAS for storing data. It's basically a computer built into there. It's got its own HDMI port. It's actually got its own operating system as well, which you can interact with on the HDMI screen, keyboard and mouse go through. You can use the internet on it. You can go to YouTube, you can go to Amazon videos. Basically it's like a content consumption PC. You can probably do other things on it as well. Um, I'm trying to think of something you could do. You can install things like Docker containers, etc. if you want to. I was hoping at one point to be able to get Windows 95 or Windows 98 SE to run on here. I think that is beyond the limit of my kind of attention span. I think I get to the point where I'd read a few bits in a tutorial and I'd be like, screw this, I'm just going to play on a computer, proper games, not old school stuff. It would be nice to do one day. Uh, you can also connect up to things like your uh, IP cameras. So like us here, we've got a ton of those IMU cameras or IM, IMU. I don't even know how they pronounce it, but should do by now. We've been doing it for four years. But I'm used cameras, uh, because they're IP cameras or Wi-Fi cameras, you can use this in the surveillance app and basically have another backup of all your cameras. So not only have they got their own SD cards in them, you can also back up all the footage onto a hard drive and use it as a basically a digital security device or a, is it a PVR, DVR, LVR, whatever the hell they, they call it these days. Anyway, you can use it for that. But what I'm actually most excited about with this is to connect up to HDMI through my capture card and actually be able to show you the stuff in real time, which I think is going to be uh, actually quite cool. Uh, so we're going to probably take a look at that. Uh, this week also we've been reviewing this. This is the Spatium M480 Play M.2. This is the two terabyte version. This thing is ridiculously quick, and it got to the point where I was I had to double check it. So I went over to MSI's website, and I got the specs off this thing, and it's like NVR is NVR. Thank you. Um, I looked at the specifications, and I was like, well, these appear to be wrong, because they've said that this is a sequential read speed of up to seven thousand megabytes per second. So basically, seven gig per second, um, and sequential writes are five thousand five hundred. And I was doing some testing on it, and it was like I was getting seven and a half gig uh, read speeds, and like six and a half write, which is like a gig faster than what it's meant to be. <clears throat> what it seems to be is M <coughs> MSI have actually put a new firmware on this drive, but they haven't updated their specs. So there was the original Spatium M four eighty. But the new Play version has got um, basically double the speed DRAM on there and also a faster cache. So this thing is ridiculous. It's super, super fast. And it fits in a PlayStation 5. So if you are one of those weird people that plays games on a console, why you'd want to do that, I don't know. But some people do. But if you've got a PlayStation 5 and you want to increase the storage and make things nice, then you can use this bad boy, which is absolutely tiny, but exceptionally cute. I think that looks absolutely awesome. Hopefully you can see that. So, actually really heavy as well. There is a heat sink on both sides because the DRAM chips on here from Micron, they're the new 176 layer chips. So these are TLC rather than QLC. So you get the speed benefits of TLC, but also they've got additional layers. So the um, the random writes, which is generally always a problem with these drives, like they list these blistering fast read and write times, and you're like, wow, that sounds really fast. But as soon as you actually start using it in a normal Windows environment as a boot drive, where there's hundreds and hundreds of little tiny little I/O things going on, that's where a lot of drives do tend to slow down, and some can actually get to the point of being almost like an SSD, like a regular SATA SSD. But this, because it's got the new uh, type of RAM on there. Micron's new 176 layer technology plus they've upgraded the cache so there is if you've got a two terabyte version you get two gigs of cache one terabyte version's got one gig of cache 
but the cache is actually DDR4 2666, which has been improved. So yeah, it is a, a very quick drive. Clearly, if you're sending a certain amount of data where the buffer starts getting full up, then it's gonna slow down a little bit. But with the speed of this, if you're running on PCI Express Gen 4 times four, it, it is just amazing. Um, I don't want to get, I don't want to send this back. They have asked for it back, but I don't want to send it back. And actually I did test it against my, I hate to say it, my silicon power drive, which is a PCI Express Gen 4 times four, one terabyte drive. So it's gonna be a little bit slower. That was topping out around about five gig per second. This is seven gig per second. So bear in mind that it's basically the same technology, just slightly upgraded. It's a massive improvement. It's a good 25, 30% faster, which is, yeah, very impressive. So yeah, MSI done very well there. It's actually not too badly priced either, around about 225 pounds for a two terabyte, which for a PCI Express Gen 4 times four is actually not bad at all. They come out originally at like $330, which is like, but yeah, definitely worth taking a look at. Full reviews coming out, uh, be in a week or so's time. So you can check that out. Um, actually, something else which I got, which this is something which I've been meaning to get for a long time. So this is a, uh, a Noctua product. This is the Noctua NF, what is it? Uh, sorry, the NAFC1, Fan Controller 1. Come in, Fan Controller 1, your time is up. This comes with a whole bunch of cables and splitters and doodads, etc. Essentially, what it is, is a basically a, a powered fan controller or fan hub. So SATA control, or SATA power, I should say. So SATA power goes into this. You've then got an output, PWM style, which um, that is the input cable. So then you can connect that. Actually, no, am I doing that wrong? Input cable with power supply adapter. That's right, yeah, so you can put that into a computer. So hook it up to a computer, that'll give you RPM readings. But you don't have to do that. You can just plug in this adapter on the end there and you get three fans off of that. So the, the cool thing is there's basically a, a control knob so you can actually set fan speed. So when I'm doing reviews of fans, quite often it'll be like, it'd be nice to see what the noise levels are like at certain RPMs or power ratings. So I can basically go from zero all the way up to 100%, independent of any motherboard control, and get a accurate reading of sound and RPMs and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, actually very cool. And for doing standalone reviews without having to put it into my PC or to be able to get those kind of individual temperatures and RPMs and noises, all that stuff, very cool. Not overly cheap for what it is, but I think it's about 15 pounds, but it is actually quite handy because it means I can cut the motherboard fan control and all that kind of stuff out of fan testing. So yeah, pretty cool, like that a lot. Did you go into how much the drive was? Oh, the NAS? No, the other thing. Oh, yes I did, yeah. Okay, that was Let's see what else is being said there. Uh, CXPX, uh, how much for the MSI SSD, if you missed that, it was, on Amazon at the moment, currently retailing for about £225. You might find them slightly cheaper elsewhere, but that is uh, pretty much the cheapest I've seen. Originally, like I said, it was $330 or $329.99. So that's come down quite a bit. Much better pricing. Uh, Mookie MC says, has Mike done a video about transferring or cloning an OS and data from one M.2 drive to a new upgraded one? Uh, yes, I have. Just do a search in the channel for uh, Macrium. M-A-C-R-I-U-M. There's actually a new version of that software come out which makes it a lot easier. So I will be doing an updated version of that uh, very shortly. You'll get the idea from the original video anyway. Clem says he is literally unboxing the thing I wanted for my PC. Oh, is that the uh, the drive? Uh, Mark Point says Mike doesn't want to give it back because he wants to put it in his PS5. <laughs> that is the last thing. That is the last thing I would put it in. I don't think 
George hasn't got one, has he? PS5? No, he's got PS4, hasn't he? Uh, actually, I'm going to get rid of this box. This is a laptop in here, if you probably haven't guessed already. But I want to uh, take a look. I got some RAM come through from our friends over at uh, Vcolor. Some of you may have seen this already, we did it in a short. This is their new Prism Pro RGB. This is DDR4 4266, uh, 32 gig kit. They run at 1.45 volts, so they're kind of overclocked out of the box. I did mention this somewhere. I said that they're factory overclocked. And they said, well, all RAM, no, what was it? Somebody said. Someone said something about right, it, saying, they're well, they're, they, they're all done like that. It's like, well, they're not really, because most DDR RAM has its own kind of baseline frequency. So manufacturers will take that baseline RAM, put it through certain tests, see what it can actually support, and then they will bake in that setting into the RAM's XP, eh, XMP profile, or DOCP, as it's, it should technically be called for AMD. But basically, yeah, they, they get RAM, see how good or bad it is, and depending how well it does, then it gets binned at a certain place. So these are uh, non-DRAM. So these are just fillers. So all these do are go into your PC and just look pretty. They don't do anything else. There's no RAM on board. All it says on there is V-color, and you've got these uh, nice diffusers on the top. Effectively, there's no RAM in there, so it's just for filling up the additional slots. But the cool part is this one. So they've actually kindly customized this RAM with our logo, which uh, I'm very pleased with. It's, it's gonna be one of those things that, when it comes to ever like changing my PC setup, it's gonna be hard to not use these. So these are the DRAM ones. So again, DDR4, 4266, 1.45 volts. But the nicest thing is, hopefully it's gonna focus on that. Flying a bit. No. Flying all day. Just tap on the screen. Should do it. Done it? No, not really. <laughs> Go on, Kath, you can do it. Is it focusing? No, should I do it? Yes. The silence is... Is it focused now? Yeah. Ish? Yeah. That'll do. There you go. I don't know if it is when I'm nodding my head. I'm hopefully uh, my head. hopefully you can see it now. So they basically put the Mike's Unboxing logo on the RAM sticks, which obviously when it's physically installed in the PC this way round, it's never going to be seen. But it's actually something that um, V-Color as a company offer as a service on top of assembling and making RAM for laptops, desktops, servers, Apple, um, basically anything that has RAM chips on it, they make. So they make SSDs as well, M.2 drives, you name it, they do it. And they've also got DDR5 coming out shortly as well. So that's gonna be interesting to see. But they offer as a service, the ability to basically print on the RAM. So they only do it on one stick on this particular instance, which you might be able to see again now. But uh, yeah, I think it looks very, very cool. I'm, I'm very pleased with that. And I'm actually very pleased because it's a 32 gig kit. So this is going into my video editing rig without question. And hopefully, I'm not entirely sure how I'm gonna go about setting the speeds up on this. Because Ryzen, or Ryzen, however you want to pronounce it, um, generally works best when the Infinity Fabric is one-to-one -one with your memory clock. So if this is 4266 megahertz RAM, the memory clock is gonna be uh, 2133, I think. Is that right? Yeah, 2133, which is basically the speed that DDR4 came out at. But because it's double data rate, it's double that. So technically the first RAM that came out was 1066. So we're kind of doubled up. Yes, basically what I'm trying to say is how do I get 4266 to run at an infinity fabric of 2133? 
most Ryzen's will run 1800 easily, 1900 possibly. 2133, hmm, I'm not too sure. Even with the latest and greatest silicon for the 5000 series, I think I still may struggle to get that to actually get that high. So I don't know. I, I'm actually, I, earlier on, I was looking up or about to look up what the fastest Infinity fabric is for the 5000 series. So if anybody wants to put it in the chat, just to save me Googling it later, that would be very useful for me because I don't think I'm going to get Infinity fabric that high. Now, if Glenn's in the chat, he's the overclocking wizard amongst us. And if, if it can be done, he should know. So Glenn, I'm relying on you. No pressure. Uh, Mookie MC says, I tried to do that with a Sharpie on my RAM, but I misspelled unboxing. And it says now unfoxing. Never tried to write RAM whilst intoxicating kids. That's probably a good idea. Anyway, so massive shout out to V-Color for uh, sending that out. That's awesome. I've got to say, this chair, I've been sat here now for what? Ghostladder asked earlier, how are your boolies? Yes. Are they cool? I wouldn't say they're cool, because it's you know, not. still 31 degrees and humidity is at 31%. So it is like sweaty McTavish. But, and also it doesn't help that I'm wearing shorts which are made out of like synthetic fibres. Never good. Anyway. Are you commando? I'm, I am not commando. I have I have actual shorts on. No, but they're beneath the shorts. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't want <laughs> multiple layers of stuff going on down there at the moment. It's the last thing you want. In case that camera gets a bit low. And something this chair's got, which not many chairs have got actually. I don't know if you can just about see it. No. No, you can't, can you? There is a uh, uh, adjustable. They show on the adverts, which I'm upset about, that this thing is ratcheted and it makes a clicking noise when you adjust it, but it doesn't. That upsets me immensely. So you can turn it up and that'll give you a bit of lumbar support. Keep on going. Glenn's required, by the way. Oh, Glenn says, 2133 has been seen on 5000 series, but it's very rare. Oh, God. Excluding the APUs. Bugger. Bugger, bugger, bugger. Thanks for that, Claire. Uh, Camlink is plugged into that PC behind me. Oh, I'm getting on a right kerfuffle. Right, let's take a look at this laptop. So this is actually possibly the cheapest laptop that you can buy on the market at the moment, which is actually decent. This is the Hewlett Packard HP 245G8. And as you can see, there is a V-Color box in there for DDR4 RAM memory. So this has actually been upgraded already. So V-Color, bless their hearts. I actually, that's what I reached out for originally. I reached out to them saying, I've just bought a laptop. It's only got eight gigs of RAM. Could do with doing an upgrade on it. Any chance you can send me a bit of RAM so I can upgrade it. So they said, well, what's inside it? So inside this one is a DDR4, 3200 megahertz or mega transfers. And yeah, they're like, are you sure? So yeah, definitely, that's what is in there. So this doesn't have XMP or any options in the BIOS whatsoever for turning on XMP. So you have to get the RAM, which is suitable for your actual, um, for your unit. You have to match it up properly or use completely new RAM, so, i.e. not using your existing RAM, so not an upgrade, more of a replacement. It's got two RAM slots in it, which is uh, always nice to see. This laptop has got a Ryzen 5 5500U, also has a Vega 7 graphics, 512 gigabyte SSD, a 15 inch screen, which is not ideal, could have done with a 14, uh, uh, no sorry, it's got a 14 inch screen rather than a 15, which would have been preferable, but it was 330 pounds, which for a laptop is ridiculously cheap. So, this, <laughs> there was a theory at some point where I bought this laptop with the principle of actually using this to stream with. Clearly buying the Camlink card was probably a way of not doing that. But it's a very, very nice looking unit. It's a little bit plasticky, but it's 330 pounds for a, a six core, 12 thread Ryzen 5. 
Yes, it only comes with 8 gigs of RAM standard, but it's okay. The cooling system might need some attention. It's a little bit on the whiny side, the fan they've used. So might need to change that at some point or at least repaste it so it doesn't kick in as often as it would. But other than that, it's a nice little unit. It's lightweight enough. You've got a Kensington lock, USB uh, Type-C, hard drive, power lights, etc. And on this side, you've got a combo headset jack, two USB 3.0s, I believe they are, even though they're color-coded black. You've got HDMI output, great for the cam link. And there is a gigabit ethernet. And what is that one there? Oh, that's the power jack, of course. Silly me. All right, let's put my uh, password in here a moment. And there we go. So it's actually nice and lightweight, almost kind of throw around. IPS screen, not the brightest, but it is an IPS screen, so that is all good. But the reason I've got this out at the moment is because, oh my God, I'm too fat. No, not because I'm too fat. I am going to try the HDMI output. If I can find it. Oh, it's on this side, isn't it? It would be. So, it would be nice and easy. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Suits you, sir. So in theory now, is it just going to work? Let's try it. HDMI 3. Nope, it's gone to the overhead. <laughs> you stupid, stupid machine. Um, control... What? What's the button for uh, sending your monitor out? I can never remember. Uh, where are we? Project, that's the one. So, duplicate. It is on duplicate. Okay. So clearly that hasn't worked, has it? Because... Right, go back to main. HDMI 3. No, it's not on there. Right, so let me go into... OBS briefly. So cam link, uh, laptop capture, HDMI 3, boom, there. That looks like it's worked. So if I go back now to overhead, yeah, so that's changed. So overhead is still the laptop, so there's something weird going on there which I don't know how to fix at present. So yeah, now the two sources now want to be the laptop. It's not the end of the world. I just need to install the software properly and get this configured correctly. Anyway, let's show you about the laptop. So um, what can I show you? Which isn't gonna to be too incriminating. Let's go into, oh, actually no, let's do uh, Alt Control Delete. Task Manager, and we'll go into Performance tab. So if we go into Memory, so currently you can see there are 24 gigs of RAM. So we've got the standard eight gigs of RAM, which comes pre-installed, plus we've installed another 16, and the speed is saying there, DDR 3200 megahertz, two of two, sodium, blah, blah, blah. Compressed RAM, available RAM, blah, blah. You get it. You get the general idea there. And, oh, thank you, Glenn. Thank you, Glenn, for the super chat. I'll have to put it back onto this one now so you can see the RGBs. Stroof. Blazing. 420 blazing. Thank you, Glenn. Hmm. Uh, Dave Jock says, uh, control, shift, and delete. Then you go to the control, delete, again, you numpty. Thanks for that. Old habits, die hard. Uh, control, shift, delete. Control, shift, delete. Control-Alt-Delete. That's what I thought. Control-Shift-Delete, then Control-Alt-Delete. Control-Alt-Delete. No, nope, that works. I think it's Control-Alt-Escape, isn't it? 
no, control shift escape. Yeah, control shift escape. You numpty. <laughs> so yes, that also works. Uh, what have we got? So that has worked. So anyway, yes, that uh, that appears to be working. Currently on. Alton F four. Alton F four has clues. That's what we used to tell people on Counter Strike. They're like, "Oh, how do I get it to show my FPS in the bottom?" Oh, that's easy. Just press Alt F four. They'd be like, "Gone." <laughs> that was good. Right. So anyway, that is uh, this is the laptop. I'm trying to think what I can do to actually show the speed of it. There's not really a great deal I can do. I can suppose I could do a quick Cinebench. Just so you can see how it runs. Because surprisingly, because it has only six cores, 12 threads, and it is a relatively low end processor, and currently on battery as well, it's, uh, it comes out somewhere in the region of like a i7 7700K, the desktop variety. Although it's not going to do as well as that at the moment because it's on battery, so I don't think it's going to do that well. But we'll see. We'll see what it does. So you can see the screen now, hopefully. Yeah, you can hear the fan kicking in a bit now. Can you see the chat at the same time? Yeah. Pyro. Hi, Pyro. Uh, Pyro, hi, Mike. I uh, got a laptop four years ago. Got a Pentium, etc. The thing is, it's really slow. I want to buy 120 gigabyte SSD for the boot, but want to keep my videos, etc., to the HDD. Any cheap SSDs to buy. Um, at the moment, if you're in the UK, there was the, I think it was the, oh, I'm not sure actually. You'll need to go to our Discord and go to the Bargains No Chat. There was a couple posted today. There's one 120 gig one. Actually, I know there's a 256 gig one, which is like 20 pounds, which I thought was pretty good. Matthew Day says, RuneScape, drop your items and hit F4 to double them. It's, it's quite funny, actually, the amount of people that will fall for that kind of stuff. Oh, where's my mouse going? On? There he is. Cool, this thing is making a feral bit of noise. Uh, really random views. Can it run Crisis Remastered, though? Um, I don't know. I've not got that far into it. It does play a few games. Um, actually, Wreckfest runs really nicely on it, surprisingly. And I've not used this on battery before for uh, Cinebench, so I'm not sure what score it's going to get. So, oh, actually, it still beats the i7 7700K. And is within a Nat's whisker of the Intel Xeon CPU, the X5650. Uh, That's actually not a bad performance, is it? For a mobile processor running on batteries. And if you look where the Intel is, the i7, the, um, the 1165G7, which is often the same price, is considerably further behind. Oh, it's a shame they didn't get one more point. It would be totally devilish. <laughs> yeah. It, this Cinebench, the R23, is ba actually based on Dave Aitken's living room, or dining room. That's what I thought, it was his picture. Very, sty room so very, very stylish. In his old place. <laughs> right, so I'm, I'm still really confused now why the Elgato doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Unless I save the profile as a different name. Maybe it's because it's the same name. But it's odd how channels one and two differ. So this is channel one. If I go to the overhead, that should be channel two, which is not, it's gonna show the laptop. And if I go to channel three, it's gonna show the laptop as well. So 
yeah, that is very bizarre. Let me just check that. So, yeah, laptop, that one, desktop. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't do it. I'm very, I'm very confused about the whole setup there. Very strange. Anyway, let's go back to the main area. So you can basically get the idea. This is a super cheap laptop. We've done a couple of upgrades on it. I'm actually really pleased with it. The IPS screen is really nice. The viewing angles on it are uh, very, very good. And surprisingly, even in this bizarre, stupid weather we're having at the moment, where it's really, really warm, um, the screen is actually usable outside. Not the brightest, but it is. it does seem to work very well. It's got um, like a, a slightly matte coating on the screen which does seem to take away a lot of the reflections. So even now, with all the lights around me, I can't really see much of a reflection on the screen, which is always really nice to, on a laptop. Right, anyway, so you've seen that now. That's enough of that. Oh, unplug, because that clearly didn't work the way I intended it to, which I'm kind of upset about, really. Taylor asked, when was the last time you had a beef burger? Uh, when was the last time I had a beef burger? About two weeks ago. I've had one beef burger since 98. Yeah, Calf's had one since 1998. Doesn't like beef burgers. Uh, Ugly Bob says, not a bad little performer. The laptop's not bad either. Calf's dropping stuff on the floor now. How did I drop ice? How did you miss your mouth? Let's get this. Let's get this packed away. Uh, so anyway, I'm I'm very pleased. This has come from sadly, it came from eBuyer, who generally I tend to not use for no other reason than kind of they're often not that cheap. But the thing is with eBuyer, they've got their own eBay site, so stuff which you could get from their normal store and then have to pay for postage you can get from ebuyer uh, ebay sorry and uh it comes just as fast and is generally cheaper because you don't have to pay for the postage so good stuff it was on a special offer so the chance of you getting it at this price at present are limited i think it's probably gone up to about 360 370 at the moment so I think it was like a 10% off thing from eBay, which happens quite often. So if you are considering a laptop and you want just a cheap and cheerful, because I have to think back, the the one that I bought previous to this one was the Acer Aspire, the A515-43, which actually was really popular. But that had um, a pretty decent specs. That was a four core, eight thread, and was very similar. The only difference being it had a full-size keyboard and had a 15-inch screen rather than being a 14-inch screen. But it only had eight gigs of RAM like this one and it only had a 240 gig hard drive, I think, from memory. So that was 400 pounds back then, I think it was. Reduced from five. Was it 300? No, it's 400, I'm sure it was. And, uh, I'm very, very pleased with it. It's got very nice specs. What, Sorry? What name is it on there? This one. HP what? Uh, HP 245 uh, G8. So generation 8 of the 245. So you get the 245 series. Surprisingly, actually, it didn't come with a huge amount of H... Well, actually, it's a lie. Yeah, there was quite a bit of HP bullet on there. So I've had to uninstall a lot of that stuff, but it wasn't, uh, wasn't too bad at all, to be honest with you. It could have been a lot worse. Uh, Caps put these on my desk, so these are the uh, the ties from the meow. Is this? I've oh, got to use them on something. Why would they cable tie these in? So what can I put that around? Which is about that sort. Of... I'm gonna need a bigger cat. <laughs> <laughs> um, what can I put around my finger? Like where is a ring? <laughs> can we actually see? They probably can. These are uh, cat ties. Oh, I've lost a bit. No doubt I'll vacuum that up From at some William. point. From William Bodie. And they're cute. Kath likes them, says they're cute. I'm 
in oh, flames perfectly fine, man. Very, various minds. Yeah, flames okay. Oh, he just lived for a few hours and then he was a little bit sad with his rude heavyweight title taken away from him, but he's over it now. Uh, Mookie MC. Does the Elgato Camlink inputs work in OBS correctly while bypassing the stream deck That's for switching? That's probably horrible. Chewing ice cubes with Michael. If only I would... Um... I'm going to try that right now. There's some things you cannot unsee or unhear. <laughs> What's that? Oh, me crunching that? Uh, where are we? So OBS, so let's go back to desktop. No, what do we want? Uh, laptop capture. Yeah, so now it says no, no signal, which is what it was doing before. So, so if I go to overhead now, that says no signal. So can link. 4K, HDMI 2, and if I now go to laptop capture, yeah, that still says that. That is very frustrating. Very frustrating. Why is it doing that? Well, I kind of know why it's doing it. Yeah. <clears throat> I will have to uh, have to endeavour to do that. I know how to do it. I've, I've downloaded the plugin for the Stream Deck software, which uh, actually, I wonder if I can get that on the other screen without breaking things. That would be. So let's get Stream Deck and drag that over onto this screen. And there we go. So if I show you the desktop now. So this is the Stream Deck Mini, the, the, the default profile. So if I go into, actually, that's way too big, isn't it? Oh, come on. Right, if I scroll down, oh no, let me scroll down. How stupid, it hasn't scaled very well, has it? So, I'm going to do this. Yeah, so you can't... <laughs> why do they do this? This is why Windows is absolutely hideous at scaling. Like, that should be moving but it refuses to do it. So I can't really show you anyway, can I? Because everything I need to show is down in the bottom of here. But essentially there is a plugin, where is it? Uh, system, Streamlabs, no, OBS. Game capture. Where are the oh Stream Deck? There we go. So Stream Deck. No, that's not in there as well. Where's the bloody plugin? Oh, this is so painstakingly awful. <laughs> uh, let's try Cam Camlink Pro. There we go. Right, so you can go into this bit and you can set multi-view mode. So you can drag that over and stick it into one of these, which um, I actually have done on this one here. So if I go into uh, Cam Link, oh great, now Afterburner has kicked in. Go away! I really should stop using Afterburner. So 
Sorry, let me turn this off a minute. Afterburner, close. Thank you. Stuff like that. Uh, right, yeah, so in this bit here, I'm going there, drag it into there, set the multi view mode. Are you sure you want to? Yes, replace. So underneath here, which you can't see at the moment, is options for the cam link, which, yes, you're not going to be able to see. So you can, I, essentially, you can click on there, but because of the way that the screen is at the moment, it's not working. So uh, let's go back to the main. Is that working now? absolute pain in the backside so yes i do need to play with that it's, if i had two monitors equally next to each other i think i could probably work out but because that's a 4k monitor that's 1080p when i drag a screen from there onto there it makes it look very bizarre anyway uh david underhill grumpy guts in the house how you doing uh, 1.7 degrees at present Pyro says, my drunk arse neighbour is singing Bohemian Rhapsody <laughs> very poorly. Awesome stuff. <laughs> right, let's have a look at the, uh, the NAS because we still haven't done that. The NAS is bizarre. Some people are going to be totally disinterested in this. And if you are, I do apologize. But this is a very, very kind of unique product. The fact that it has six drive bays, even though it's a dual bay NAS, which some of you are gonna be like, well, how does that even work? Well, it is magic, as Paul Daniels once said. So Debbie McGee, what did you first see in Multimillionaire Paul Daniels? So, two bays, and metal drive sleds, and this one has actually got a drive installed, because I have actually installed an operating system on it. In fact, the, uh, actually I'm not sure if it's the latest version, I might need to update it. So, actually pretty compact in terms of what it actually is. All metal construction, which is always nice to see, but what is very, very cool, on the back, 2.5 GB LAN, two ports, so you can do link aggregation and have up to five gigabits per second. You've got a USB 3.2 Gem 1 port there, and also an HDMI port. So again, I can fire this up, plug in the HDMI when it's working, and I can select it so you can actually see the kind of like the onboard operating system, which is actually very cool. So you could potentially have this on maybe a TV cabinet or something, or behind your TV cabinet, have some drives in there, backing up all your family data, blah, blah, blah. But also have the HDMI plugged into your TV. So if you just want to watch some movies that you've stored on here, however you've uh, obtained them, let's say, or maybe you just want to watch some YouTube or uh, Prime, Prime videos, that sort of thing, or Hulu. Basically, there's loads of apps you can get. So if you can't do it actually in a web browser, which this does have, you can do it in little, uh, applications which are from Asus's or Asus stores I should say from Asus stores uh, portfolio it's got a few on there and you can do all the usual stuff like Plex media server and all that kind of stuff if you want to also um, the M.2 drives is what I'm actually quite interested in and I don't honestly remember seeing them before so I'm gonna open this up and have a have a little look and see what the deal is so I think it's only a couple of screws on here or three screws possibly It's very warm tonight. Well, Bill. <laughs> How you doing, Well, Bill? He's on catch up. Okay, so metal frame. So on the top, there are four M.2 NVMe slots, and you don't have any screws or anything on those, so they're just like pushing ones. Wonder if you could actually put the uh, the MSI drive in there because of the extra heat sink on there. Are you able to turn an old PC into a NAS or do you have to, ha uh, or do you have video about it? 
um, you can turn an old PC into a NAS, and a lot of people like to do it that way. For me, personally, I, I'll be honest, I'm not keen on it. Because the thing is with a PC, much like anything which you kind of homebrew yourself, so you imagine, you build your own PC in general for running Windows. Windows itself will probably run on it fine 99.9% .9 of the time. But potentially you could have configuration issues or crashes, that sort of stuff. Which is always going to be one of those things that if you make your own NAS, you are kind of at the mercy of your own support levels. So if you're doing something like... Um, the pure NAS or whatever the homebrew version is these days, if you've got a configuration of this old PC that you've got, if it isn't 100% supported in their driver base of what works under that kind of Linux-esque environment, then you're kind of screwed and you're very much going to be on your own with it. Which, for me personally, when it's got important data, I don't really want to be going through that kind of rigmarole. So if I wake up one day and the NAS comes up with an error message saying it's done an update and this is not working or the uh, connection to the internet has gone or some piece of hardware is just not doing what it should or it's just randomly crashing on you, you would have to fix that or find someone in the support community which is actually going to do it for you, which if you're a home user then probably you might be able to tolerate that. If you're making your living at home or things on your network or what help you to make your living, it's a very different story. And also because very much like Apple, Apple support is pretty easy to do because the hardware is designed for the software and vice versa. So if something starts going wrong, it's unlikely to be a driver unless it's like an add-on third party thing. So me personally, although I've had the thought before of building a NAS from a PC, there's always that bit in the back of my mind that's thinking, well, who's going to support this? Am I going to be the one left with a system which possibly doesn't work uh, for some reason? <laughs> yeah, it won't, it won't be CAF. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, there you go. Chris? Let's give you one overhead so you can see this. So there Chris. are the uh, the four slots. Chris? Is that? Chris Hartford. Um, would an old PC use more power if on 24-7? It has a... It's potentially it could do. It depends what the old PC is. If it's a very, very old PC, they're not probably going to be that uh, efficient. But if it's a very low-end PC, then potentially it could be. So that is it. That is our M.2 drive installed. Very simple. And of course, you can put four of them in there. Now, something I should say is the M.2 drives here cannot be in the same storage pool as your mechanical drives in here. For obvious reasons, because M.2 drives are massively faster, so they do have to be two independent uh, drive pools. So you can use this as a single drive, double drive in RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5 if you want to add another drive, RAID 10, etc, etc if you want to, but this has to be a separate RAID pool than your hard disk drives. So potentially if you want to, you could put like um, your office files on M.2 drives that are nice and fast for access for random read writes. Whereas if you've got movies that stream, then you could put those on your hard drives in this section here, which are obviously going to be much cheaper to buy. You're going to get better value out of it. So you have slower spinning drives in here for massive files like movies and have your kind of fast moving stuff or even maybe operating systems for Docker or... Uh, Virtual machines have those on M.2 drives. It does make it very, very flexible. And I've just noticed I put that into drive slot three because I didn't read the numbers. It even says there one, two, three, four. And I still managed to not read it. So yeah, if you start it up and that's why it doesn't recognize it because it's there. I suppose you can put it in anyone you want. It's nice that they're actually numbered. Although it would have been nice to see the numbers on the top. So if it says drive 2 has failed and you've got all four populated, you can have to take at least one out, aren't you, to work out which drive it is that's failed. What's this device called? Uh, this device is known as the Asus Store Locker Store 2 Gen 2. The ordinary dude, I'll t t dude even, I'll take my home built Unraid over a factory now any day. If you know how to support it, 
then I would say that is a much better way of doing it. If you know how to support it, you know the command lines, and you're happy to do that, then yeah, if you've, if you've got the the, uh, the equipment, not, why does that not want to fit in there? How stupid am I? Don't answer that, people. James Brock's in the house, he's brought in all the... Hello, James Brock. Oh, that we going. That's why we're going to go back together. He's brought in all the porn people. Oh dear, James Brock's brought all the adult dating site people with him. Actually, there just seems to be a common thing, because um, Adam and IT was doing a stream today, and after about an hour and a half of him streaming, they came in. Uh, not James Brock. No, not James Brock. It was uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, the filth. Why does they do that? Uh, James Brock's a tax-free weekend here. Nice. <coughs> Should have bought another GPU. What is a tax-free weekend? Do they have that in America? Who knows? Hashtag blame James Brock. Dave Aitken deleted the uh, things. No, David Aitken. Didn't see you there. David Aitken comes in, just dropping in to say hi and delete all the, uh, <laughs> the porno stuff. Thank you for that. I'm wondering where actually on here. Because it was on Adam and IT. Did the porn box come in when he went on? Yeah. Did he take them there as well? You can, I'm sure, you can upgrade the RAM in this as well. Because it comes with four gigs of RAM as standard. But it does appear that there is. There is a RAM slot there, but that looks extremely hard to get to. It's a state thing, the tax free. Ah, uh, state thing, okay. Thank you for that. Uh, is there more than one RAM slot? It doesn't appear there is. I can't really see in there. Yeah, there is a single RAM slot. So if you wanted to upgrade the RAM, it would appear that you'd have to physically remove the existing 4 gig and swap out with the 8 gig. And it is extremely user unfriendly to get to. So you probably don't want to do that. Although saying that, 4 gigs for a NAS is more than enough. You don't really need more than that. And I have found actually in using this, just in the general operating system and going around the menus and stuff, even with a hard drive rather than an M.2 drive running it, it was surprisingly quick. And in fact, let me fire it up and I will show you actually what it looks like. Because there's probably a lot of you that don't know what an actual NAS operating system looks like. Me being one of them. Uh, oh, I don't really want to unwrap that cable, do I? So if I unwrap that cable, that's something else I've got to do when I come to do the unboxing. So, let's try not to run over my cable. And let's go into the cables and PSU box. Come on, there's got to be a kettle lead in here. Hallelujah. I swear it's getting warmer. It's 0.3 degrees cooler currently. Power. Power. I should put it in there. Okay. James Brock says, I do not teach him like. All right. He does not know what a NAS operating system looks like. Ah, uh, okay. Well, you're going to find I, out. I fell asleep. <laughs> Calf drop. I can't, can't lie. I <laughs> uh, wonder if it matters which one of these ports I plug into. I don't know, and I don't care. So let's just plug it into that one and see what happens. And where's my HDMI lead? Did I unplug it? Oh, you're... Sorry. You go blurry. <coughs> I thought it was just everyone had drunk too much then, their eyes are all... That's because face auto-tracking, isn't it? Uh, screwdriver. Oh, I didn't press the power button, did I press the uh, USB button? Does that come on? There we go. The 
smell of new components burning. Don't drop the screws. Bang! Oh, you idiot. <laughs> Did actually poop a little bit then. Don't rock a drive around when you're actually uh, <laughs> doing anything with your NAS. You have to be careful. Tech Daniel. Yes. I have bad experience of pre-built NAS. I got logical error two times with WD NAS, no HDD problem. Uh, I operating system become better. Yes, I would. If you're buying a Western Digital NAS or a Seagate NAS, any of those kind of wannabe NAS brands, I would av avoid. I would never knowingly buy a West. Thank you. I would never knowingly buy a Western Digital um, NAS drive because. Whenever you look at them, any of the kind of the sell sites or review sites, they're just prone for failures. The operating systems aren't always updated and looked after. It's, yeah, they're cheap for a reason. Normally they are quite cheap actually, to be fair. Uh, wonder if the NAS is actually up and running now. It should be. I haven't plugged in the keyboard and mouse. I can hear something. Or a moth or something. I can hear the hard drive. Uh, right, I need a keyboard and mouse. And actually, let's see if I can <coughs> go into. Oh, I don't want to choose that, do I? Oh, what the hell? James Brock asks, "Do I do the bang while you're driving? What do I shout when you're driving?" I don't know. It's been so long. Think about it. What do I shout? I don't know. Slow down. No. Stop. Break. Yeah. <laughs> All of the above. Right, let's plug in our uh, USB dongle here and hopefully this is going to work. And there we go. So there is your um, Asia Store NAS operating system HDMI output. So you've got various things on there that you can see. So Firefox you've got as a browser, you've got Netflix as an app, uh, YouTube as an app, ADM, which is the actual kind of operating system. If you go to video, nothing, oh, it's still loading up. So yeah, there's actually nothing in that, nothing in social. You can go into various things here. So your settings, so the actual, um, HDMI output, its own operating system, the ADM, you can choose very different things which are kind of installed and displayed. You've got resolution wise, so you can choose uh, like 4K or whatever. So 4K 30, 1080p 60, 720, 25, 1080p 30, 60, 50, Blah, 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 blah. Or you can just set it to auto. There's hundreds of ones you can choose from. <coughs> Christ, there is a lot. Now I'm back to auto again. We'll choose auto and, oh great. I lost the signal. I'll behave. Oh, there we go. So it was updating the signal. So you've got volume controls and that kind of usual stuff. I'll click on ADM. It'll take you actually into the Asia Store uh, disk management software. Uh, it tells you there is a security risk ahead, blah, blah, blah. That is absolutely tiny and I can't read that. Uh, oh, I know what that is. So there you go, then you can log in to the, um, the actual NAS side of things as well if you want to. Uh, I, 
can barely see that. So this is probably not a good idea to have done this actually in there. Where is the... Sorry, you have to excuse me. I can barely see that because I'm actually looking onto another screen and it's 4K minimized into a tiny, tiny little window. And how do I get out of here? <laughs> right. Oh, I don't want to go back into there. Oh, I know what it'd be. Is it the escape key? Windows key. Mm. I am struggling here. This is why you should read the manual. What does that say? Oh, I haven't got a clue how to get out of this now. Is it? There is supposed to be a thing on here to show you how to get back. Where the hell is it? There's normally something you can click on up here. Thank you. Fire Wolfman. What? Well, that's not working either. I thought normally it was like a skip or something. Is this actual keyboard working? Yeah. Alt F4. Oh, come on. Anyone else got any ideas? <laughs> Alt Tab, let's try Alt Tab. Another. Yeah, I don't think that works in the uh, in Asia Store's own little app. going on there. Well, I don't want Asus Store downloads. Where is the thing? Is it just not showing me all of the screen? I'm really confused. I think what I've done is I've set up a configuration where I actually can't get back out because I've not logged in. So it's like in kiosk mode. So I'm going to have to log in from the browser and do it that way, which I'm not going to do. That's a pain in the backside. The boolies have fallen off. <laughs> on the head, on the head. On the head. Hot. It's hot here. It's actually quite cool coming through the window now. Let's have a look at the chat, what's going on here. So, are you full screen F11? Well, that's an idea. Let's try F11. So, 
you think that one of these... Uh, there we go. Hey, so F10. <laughs> F10 was the magic one. Wow, that was hard work. Control and W closes the window. Might be time to do a bloody... Might have to do a video on that. shortcut key tutorial. <laughs> was I over-scanning? No. Audio default app. Right, so the Acer Store portal is the default app. So if you want to, when you start it up, you can get it to go straight into Netflix or YouTube or Firefox. ADM, Acer Store portal, blah, blah, blah. Settings. So. Glenn's off. Exit. Cheers, Glenn. I just noticed actually the time is wrong. Is it actually connected to the internet? I'm thinking. I know it's an hour different. I know it is. I haven't updated the time, have I? So let's go into YouTube. Yeah, whatever. Accept all. And there we go. So it's the normal YouTube experience, as if it is in a browser. This is probably showing at 4K at the moment, so it probably looks absolutely awful. And so that's going to take us back to eight there. Go to ADM. I'm going to have to log in now, aren't I? Which I don't think I've put on the guest account. So let's go back to main a minute before I put my uh, my credentials in. I've got to be honest with you, I'm not even sure. Oh, I can't even see them, can I now? So, <laughs> I can't see a thing. Is that actually gone in? I have no idea. I can't even tell. This is quite frustrating. Hey, <laughs> I actually typed it in. In without actually seeing it, and it worked. That's impressive. Oh, and I've still got the tax free weekend on there. Let's clear that off. Oh, I'm not using that mouse anymore, am I? Wow, too many keyboards and too many mice. My tiny brain can't cope with that. And where's the other mouse? There we are. Okay, right, uh, back to there. Okay, so this is a stupid idea. I should have never chosen 4K as a resolution for this. That was a, that's on me. Uh, so get rid of that. So that is all your applications, which are actually in the Azu Store app. So you've got things like ClamAV, which is the antivirus. Nobody can really see that. It's too small. So it is way too small, isn't it? Maybe. So you can go into there. Blah blah blah. You've got all the stuff like the office image, the library for music. Uh, actually, where is the settings cog? I can't even see. My I oh there, right in the middle. So you can go and change all your settings in here. This is way too small though. I do need to work on that. So anyway, hopefully you get the general idea. It is basically an operating system all of its own. I can't even see what those are. So that is... Your shutdown. Power off, there we go. Because that is driving me insane. So anyway, that's going to power down now. Or at least in theory it will do. Sorry that the resolutions are wrong there. I do need to work on this... Uh, Elgato set up to make sure that the screens are actually doing what they're meant to do. It's nice that it'll do 4K, but for this size screen and seeing it on there and probably on a mobile phone, it's probably absolutely horrendous. So I'm gonna wait for this to shut itself down. Have a drink. Ira Wolfman says I could have used Zoom in Firefox. I don't think it helps with me not using Firefox either as a browser. I 
So Alt and Plus to zoom or Alt and Use menu to click text zoom only. Well, that's interesting. A letter says, tell Mike, thanks for me. My new GPU is suffering with micro stutters and freezing. I found his fixed micro stutter video and it did the trick on my video. It's now buttery smooth. Oh, that's awesome. Dutch Jan, where is the RGB? There is a very, very significant lack of RGB on this uh, particular device, I'm sad to say. Let's, uh, oh. I can't even plug that back in now. So I have to stand up. Oh, God. Actually, that's quite impressive because look at the chair. If it's actually focusing, I don't know if it will be. But there is the blue chair. Now, obviously, a blue chair like that would, in normal circumstances, look absolutely sweaty as hell with the amount of moisture that's been pouring out of me today. And this is pretty much bone dry. And it looks actually very nice. I like the blue colour. I wasn't too sure if it, I was going to like it or not. But I think it actually looks pretty decent. And actually, I need to put my boolies... I think it actually looks better on camera. Like more mics and box and blue. It is, isn't it? The blue is... Um, it's not, not a million miles on it. It's what it is in real life, slightly. And it's kind of like a denim-y sort of effect. But it's not... It doesn't feel as harsh as denim. It's like a very... It's, a, it's almost like a brushed... Brushed effect. It is, it is very nice and actually even though it is super super hot it actually doesn't feel that uncomfortable to sit on for uh well quite a long period of time shut down it yeah right alexa says i just already done that one okay sorry sorry definitely a work in progress let's have a look for your chat uh Irie Wolfman says, how the chair upgrade doing? I was looking at Boolies, but bought Secret Labs. I'll be honest with you, I've never had a Secret Labs chair. I've had a Secret Labs kind of clone, but I've never owned a Secret Labs chair. So it would be unfair of me to say um, it's better because I have no real point of reference in that regard. That sounded very posh. Um, but yeah, I think... Um, because I assumed that the Boolies chairs were going to be super, super expensive. And surprisingly, actually, they're not. This one is about half the price of the... Oh, what was the one that George had for the Christmas? Noble. Noble chairs. It's about half the price of the Noble chair that George has got, which I would say, I would say is a comparable feel or comparable build quality and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, half the price of it. And arguably this has got more features than the Noble. Why do these never go back in the way they're meant to? Not doing that always troubles me. You'd think by now I'd have had this kind of whole boxing thing sus. Let's just chuck that in there. I'm surprised that Jack hasn't been on the case actually. Hi Jack. Hi Mike. How's the review going? Oh yeah, it's fine, no problem. Not touched it, still in the box. <laughs> Keep your face in the picture. Sorry, face in the picture. That's the trouble with face auto detect. You could draw some eyes on the top of your head. Yeah. When you do put your head draw, draw some rabbits and they look like hairs from a distance. Boom. Hiker just got in from work. How you doing? Sorry, I'm crunching ice now. I shouldn't be doing that. He doesn't consciously think of it when he's usually doing it. James Brock says looks comfy. It is. It is actually comfy. I'm going to adjust the, uh, the lumbar support. I hate lumbar support cushions. I think they're the most offensive thing in the world. They work, but... They're just so annoying because I used to always find that either they pushed me far too forward or not having it made it feel as if it was like concave. So I think with a, a lumbar support, having a physical cushion is, is never going to be satisfactory for 
probably 99% of people. All right, calf's, calf's got one on there, but it's just basically for Poppy to lie no, on. it's not. It's what it was when she was small enough. It's so Flame can sit behind me, and yeah. I have actually got a bit of seat to sit on. But ha so it's halfway up my back. Actually having a an adjustment wheel on the side, so you can just dial it in right. So it's like, because you know what it's like, if you're sat in some position, like I'm sat relatively upright at the moment, so you kind of, it's quite nice to have that little bit of extra support. But whereas if you kind of pull the lever and you start reclining, it almost feels then like you've got something stabbing in your back. So then you can just loosen off a little bit and make it more comfortable, which is, I think, where a lot of companies go wrong, where they do that. And it's just like, why, why have a lumbar support cushion? It just makes no sense at all. Whereas having the mechanism in there can't be that much more expensive than actually making a physical cushion, I would have thought. Well, maybe it is a little bit, but it's certainly more useful. Uh, Ugly Bob says, when you said you had an iced coffee, I was so relieved to see you drink it this time. Yes, the iced coffee is not very good in the other way. Uh, Ivory Wolfman, so the lumbar support in my chair and my secret lab are not used, even though I have a bad back. I never get it in the right spot. Yeah, that's always the thing as well, because most lumbar support cushions, if they're... They're either just a separate cushion, so you physically got to put it somewhere and maybe Velcro it in place or just hope that it sits where you want it to be. And then as soon as you move forward or sit back, it just falls down behind your butt, which is pointless. Or the other ones, you've got the ones where they've got elasticated straps on the side. So you're there kind of tugging it into place. And in actual fact, being where they are, if you actually put your arms behind your back like that, if you're someone who suffers with a bad back, literally doing that, can be painful and even worse is if you're too lazy to stand up to move the cushion which to be fair most people are going to be you, are. you end up turning around like this on a sideways angle and you're trying to lift the cushion up and you're bound to sprain something in your back because it's just such an unnatural movement and then actually twisting and using physical force to lift or push the cushion up just putting so much like weird lateral pressure on your spinal column it, you're asking for trouble so yeah, having the um, the lumbar support, which you can just adjust, like you do in most cars, like any modern or relatively modern car that's got a lumbar support in it, is going to have one of those adjustment dials on the side, or maybe it might be on an electrical motor or something. But generally, they're all in that place, and they're super comfy, and that is the reason for it, because you can adjust it. Kevin says you're absolutely right. When you uh, remove them, it feels like you're getting sucked into a black hole. It does. It, it feels like there's a massive gap where your back has been. It's very weird. I'll just be grateful you ain't got a cat sitting there. And also the armrests. Now I, I'm not a massive fan of armrests, but these are actually quite nice. There's a little bit of wib, wib, wibble and wobble to them, but they've done it in such a nice way that it's kind of it's not offensive. I quite like it. Uh, Rick H, twenty dollars super chat. Thank you so much, Rick. And says uh, for new high tech goodies. Enjoy. Sorry, I couldn't see that. It's uh, it's highlighted itself because I've got my mouse over it. Or it's de-highlighted itself, bizarrely. Why would a system that's designed for reading super chats make it so that if you move your mouse over the super chat, it de-highlights it? Wow. Uh, Mr. E says, is there any actual difference between a good office chair and a gaming chair? I would... I've said this actually already, and I think I said it in... Where did I say it? I said it... Oh, well, I, did a, I did a quick short on this when I put it together. And I wouldn't call this a gaming chair. I think calling it a gaming chair actually is doing an injustice. It isn't a gaming chair, because gaming chairs generally are... It's the look. More the look, it. yeah. They're that kind of typical bucket seat, padded, a little bit leery, or leery, whatever the word is. And yeah, they they've generally got a bad reputation. So I would go as far to say this isn't a gaming chair. Although the cat likes using it as it's, a scratching piece. It's just a chair. It's just a decent chair. It's not an office chair. It's not a gaming chair. It's not a bedroom chair. It's not a computer chair. It's kind of somewhere in between all of them. It's just a comfortable chair, which happens to do many things. Uh, actually, earlier on today I was waiting for a video to upload. And I reclined it, and I was just led against the back here, feet up on the aero cool case I've got over there, and I could have quite easily fallen asleep. 
is very comfortable. And even with this like super sweltering hot conditions, I wasn't like, oh God, I gotta get up, this is so sweaty. And I've deliberately all week, I've been doing stuff and sitting down in the chair and, and not kind of taking much care of. I've caught often, I've been sat here just in a t-shirt, so sweating straight through onto the chair. And it is completely unmarked. They've got some sort of coating. Yeah. They, there's some sort of coating on here. I wanted to do it. I wanted to be so that I've actually used it. So when you see it in the review video, you can see that I've actually used it or that I know in my heart of hearts that I've used it. And if there's any kind of issues with the fabric or anything, because people are going to say that, I know for a fact, people will be like, I don't want a fabric chair because it's going to get mucky. So that is another reason why I went for a lighter colour, just so that if it does mark, you lot and me will be the first ones to find out about it, which I think is kind of what we should be doing. Charlie. How much are I think this one, this is the the Bully Master. The Bully's Master, which uh, I'm gonna have a look at actually because I'm not too sure. I think it's 225. Which I don't think it's actually that bad. Bully's Master fabric, uh, actually no 289, which is actually quite a jump. I thought there was a sale on, there must have been a sale on. Because I'm sure I've seen it cheaper than that. Let's go to there and let's see if the desktop will work. So there we are. This is the version for 2022. And that is the version that I've got. I was expecting the wheels to be rubbish, but they're actually quite good. I wanted them to be rubber casters, but they're not. They're some sort of blend. But they work well. There's the armrest, so it's all like nicely... Um, What's the word for that when they plate it? Like anodized or like with heat sinks when they're chrome or brass and they put that kind of a oh, nickel, nickel plating. So you've got nickel plating over the uh, arm bits, the rests. There's the lumbar support thing. Oh, zoom in, you swing. Oh, you can see it. So there is the, uh, the adjustment wheel for the lumbar support which I actually really like. My particular one that came through, um, I've got a little bit of a crack on one of these plastic bits, which it happened in transit, I believe, which is a little bit unfortunate, but is what it is. Uh, so you've got the water repellent fabric, so you've got it in charcoal. Customer score, very good. Carolina blue. Oh, from our point of view, or someone just said that? No, for the crack. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, talking to customer support, we did actually, I reached out to them and said, look, I think um, one of the plastic bits has been damaged. It's only got a crack. It's not damaged, but it still works. But they said, uh, that's fine, that's not a problem. We'll send you another one. Just let us know which, which part it is and we'll get one out to you. So we don't have to, really. It's not bad. I just thought I w wanted you to know about it. Anyway, so that is the one we've got. They've also got it in an ash grey. Can the armrest be off or unassembled from it? Yeah, you can take the armrest off. There's just a couple of bolts which hold them on, so you don't have to have the armrest on. I was contemplating not putting the armrest on to take up a little bit less room. I may well take them off after. Uh, if you go in the Ultraflex PU, it's PU leather. So they got that in black. Then you got the blue as well. I kind of like that blue as well, but it's not quite mud blue. Uh, you got brown. So brain leather, that actually looks pretty cool. That reminds me of a BMW or something. And then you've got red as well, which uh, that's kind of nice as well. But Carolina blue, I like. Ah, there is a thing there. So yeah, use the comer, use the code, a comer, that is a combination of code and summer to give you comer. Uh, if you use the code SUMMER30, you get £30 off. So that takes it down to got 259 A little bit better. And we've got optional extra warranty for... Um, it comes with a two-year warranty anyway, I think. And they actually ship from Essex in the UK. I didn't realise that. So you're, uh, if you're buying in the UK, and you go to bullies.co.uk, you'll get it shipped from the UK. If you go to bullies.com, I'm assuming they come from California. I think that's where they're based. I could be wrong. 
Just Jason's brain chair. The reviews look good. So verified purchases as well. Mostly, uh, well, there's one one star. One, five, one star, two, two star, seven. Basically, you get the general idea. The majority are five star. In fact, if you take the, that's 95% of the reviews are four or five star reviews. So that means that, uh, Actually, that's wrong. If 82% are five star and 13% are four star, help me out here. That's 95%, isn't it? So how can you have three, one, and two? And that's the averages of, I've guessed their numbers are maybe rounded up. So that's 101% of all reviews there. <laughs> Nicely done. I guess it is rounded up because of how many reviews it is. But yeah, seems like uh seems good. Seems good. Falsy product and poor customer care. So what was that? Uh, fault on the 4D armrest as the arm pad was very loose compared to the other one. And mine are about the same, so I'm not gonna go into that. Uh, in addition, the gas cylinder lost gas and had a slow leak. As customer service was meant to be high priority, I thought it would be an issue in contact the company, expecting a quick replacement to be sent in the post. As this has been my experience with other companies, unfortunately, this has not been the case, and I'm currently battling the company that seems to want to ignore your rights under the sale of goods supply, blah, blah, blah. Hmm. Less than 28 days old. So that is not good. And it is a verified purchase, so, well... Oh, actually, what was their reply? Hello, sorry to hear about that. Our support team is always here to assist you with any issues, Jared, but we really need the video about the issue to active our warranty, or activate our warranty, but you refuse to send it to us. The video would help us find and confirm where the issue is and send a replacement as soon as possible. You can always check. So, right, okay, so that makes sense. Most warranty companies, in fact, a lot of warranty, we should talk about Linus's warranties, but we probably shouldn't. Yeah. Um, most warranties, in the modern world, um, if you try to make a claim, they'll want some <laughs> right, is that working now? It does appear to be. I bet everyone's gone, man. Oh, sorry, back with slab old coal. There we go. It was the battery. So 
I'm actually well, getting power to the camera via a USB Type-C charging plug. Now, it seems the charging plug is actually not giving as much juice as what I'm using. So after about two hours, it appears we've extinguished uh, the onboard battery. So yes, my apologies to that. Good job I got a spare battery. Didn't have any warning signs on the camera though, which is a little bit, a uh, little bit bizarre. Anyway, still. Hmm. <laughs> right. Anyway, so if you, uh, yeah, companies with warranties, they want you to either send the old bit back or provide a photo or video evidence of the actual damaged part. Just make sure you're not trying to blag them. There's a lot of people out there which will get in contact with a company and say, X is broken, can you send me a new one? And then they'll get it and then they'll just sell it on eBay. There's actually people that make a living out of doing that. Just phoning companies saying, uh, I've broken the hose on my karcher or I've um, snapped the aerial on Wi-Fi adapter or something. And they'll get them, come in, and then they'll just list it on eBay or local selling sites. So in order to prevent people taking the mickey out of the system, they require some form of proof. So in that particular instance, as we saw there, um, Boolies have come back and said, well, we've given you the opportunity, we're more than happy to replace your item, but you have to give us some form of evidence that the item is broken, which I think is completely reasonable. Let me know in the comments what you think, I think it is. So yeah, to leave a one-star review because you've not adhered to the warranty policy seems a little bit disingenuous to me. So of the other reviews, there were what five or six others which were negative. So are, yeah, are, like they were saying in the chat, most people were more likely to, to yeah. a bad review than to a good one. There is that yeah, people if like you me. if you have. Yeah, people are just moaners in general, especially here in the United Kingdom. Um, we're more than happy to moan about stuff, especially if we can do it with the sort of the distance of the, the internet wire. or the keyboard. Yeah. So you, if you go to a restaurant and get served bad food, it's unlikely you're going to say anything. You'll after you'll write a review about it, but at the time you won't say anything. And that is the trouble with internet reviews: is that people will write a review and be completely unreasonable because they've got that distance between them. Anyway, um, Kevin, uh, Chris Hartford says, Amazon returns get exploited, I'm sure. They do, but they do offer the 30 day, no quibble, no questions asked returns policy. So as long as you send the item back in a resaleable as new condition, they're quite happy to do it. Now, they get so many items through their doors, they don't get time to check them all. So, normally they'll have a glance and inspection, maybe look inside the box, yeah, it looks like it's there, fine. Send it back out. If it goes out again, comes back, and someone says there's bits missing, they'll be like, okay, whatever, we'll take a hit on it. We're making so much money, it makes no difference at all. If it's high-end stuff, then normally, like, I've sent cameras back before now, Sony camera, the A60, 400 I think and the ZV-10 both of those took ages to get the refund because they obviously they go back and they must check things over in a more kind of uh, precise way but for things like computer stuff motherboards generally just send it straight back they don't bat an eyelid which is handy because my uh, Corsair 4000D will likely be going back and being replaced with the Fantex case so I will be doing that very likely it's not exploiting it, it's there, they offer it, a 30 day thing, if you're not happy, send it back. So, I will. Uh, Kevin says, can you spill the beans on the LTT warranties? I don't think there's really any beans to spill as such. Linus is selling a, a backpack, which has various features which make it more of a premium product. If you're buying a premium product in general, so backpacks, for example, luggage, that sort of stuff, when you're spending a lot of money, like $250 on a backpack or piece of luggage, most manufacturers that have spent a bit of time in uh, R&D, etc., 
will offer a lifetime warranty or 10 year warranty or X amount of warranty. Where LTT went wrong is they had this out, they kind of test in the water. They are quite new to this particular part of the market. So when asked about the warranty, they said, someone asked, was it going to be a lifetime warranty or what's the deal with the warranty? And Linus jokingly, I believe, said something along the lines of, uh, just laughed and said, what warranty? As a joke. Then it kind of got into a thing where they were discussing the warranties more and it will be a year or a two year, whatever the kind of default is. And people are like, well, that's not really good enough. And then they've said that Lions Tech Tips, as in all of their merchandise, I'm guessing, so hoodies, uh, sweatshirts, mouse pads, if people get in contact with the support team and say, I've got a problem, it seems that they will take care of it and just replace or whatever they can to make the customer happy, which is fine. So they go out of their way to make sure that customers are happy. But they don't specify in writing what the warranty terms and conditions are which is fine if you're just selling merch t-shirts uh whatever people are generally going to be buying that to support you as a creator or as a channel i understand if somebody bought a mike's unboxing t-shirt the stitching came undone it's unlikely they're going to complain about it they'll just be like mm, it is what it is i've i've helped support the channel blah 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 i get that um when you're spending $250 on a backpack, I think that then becomes a different matter. And if other manufacturers seem to be offering a lifetime warranty, then you either have to kind of put up or shut up. You can't say that you're a customer focused company and then not have something in stone to say what your warranty is. Because when there's a gray area, people are always gonna be upset. Now, potentially they could be pleased because there isn't a specific warranty implied, but if you contacted them, there's a very strong chance that they'll turn around and say, okay, we'll fix it. When it comes to a £250 bag, effectively, I would imagine their customer support people are going to be a little bit more stringent about sending out another bag when against something like a t-shirt, which costs money, $20. It's a very different ball game. So that is why really they need to be at the top of their game. And also the fact that obviously LTT and others have always jumped on the bandwagon when a company has had poor support or has given bad service. They've been the ones that have kind of stood up and said, well, you know, you should be doing this, you should be doing that. So that is why, again, the actual length of the warranty doesn't really make a difference. It's the fact that they've been ambiguous not being clear, not being precise when they chastise other people for doing it. So it's a kind of a double standards thing. It's not so much that they're doing it intentionally or it's, a, it's not a big issue. It really isn't. But it's just yeah, it's just people being people. Like LTT as a company, I'm assuming rightly or wrongly that they always try and do right by their customers and try and do the best thing they can and trying to help customers make informed choices. Now, Right, it's done. Right. Clearly, in some instances, um, that isn't always the case. There's a lot of YouTubers out there and companies which will promote products which may not necessarily be the best option, but they're sponsored or whatever, so that kind of comes into it a little bit. Anyway, so, yeah, I don't think it's uh, a bad thing. He His problem was he didn't want to have the onus of the warranty being on his family should something happen to him. So, um, yeah, it's, if you're a CEO of a company and you're doing live streams, then you should be kind of a little bit more thoughtful about what you say. It happens to us all. I've said stupid things online. I know for a fact I have. So I'm not going to turn around and say that I'm any way better than LTT and could have handled it better because chances are I probably wouldn't. And if I'm in a position where I've got a lot of irons and a lot of fires, I think in a live stream is probably the worst place that they could have done that. But effectively, Linus Tech Tips live streams are almost a constant LTT store kind of advertisement. At least they seem like that for a long time. 
the WAN show has definitely changed from what it used to be. It's before they had LTT store anyway. And for those of you old enough to remember what the WAN show started out like, yes, it's a completely different beast now from what it used to be. So, um, yeah, I guess that's kind of it, really. The, uh, I'm going to read what some of your comments are, actually, to see... Did I actually plug that in? Yes, I did. Let's see what you guys are saying. So... Uh, I was just waiting for a line to say, time for the re-wall. Uh, Chris Hartford, some items are made so cheap, the huge margin means they can offer a lifetime and still in profits. Oh, definitely, definitely. If you look at um, RAM, RAM manufacturers and distributors, clearly to offer a lifetime warranty on RAM sticks, which most companies do these days, there's clearly a lot of margin in it, or they're hoping on numbers, or They've got a really good um, insurance policy with another company, a third party. That, that happens a lot. So every time they sell an item, a small portion of that gets sold to another company for, as insurance. Um, PC manufacturers do that all the time. So small mum and pop stores, if they sell a warranty with a PC, they will pay maybe $10 to a warranty company. And that warranty company will look after that PC for the next 12 months, which obviously... They're hoping on lots of numbers, lots of people buying the warranty and not claiming in order for them to actually make any money. Like car insurance. Millions and millions of people buy car insurance every year. Not millions of people will make a claim. So it's all about numbers. Moving on. Uh, Kevin says £200 plus is an interesting price for a backpack. I wonder what warrants the price. It's going to be down to... Um, quality, workmanship, design, return on investment, all that kind of stuff. Normally, if you're selling something of that sort of product at retail, you should be aiming for at least 50 to 60% profit margin, at least, to make it actually viable. So, potentially they're paying somewhere in the region of about $80 to have it produced, maybe... 100 with shipping you're really guessing that complete guesstimate i'm i don't know for a fact how much they're getting them for but i would say as a general rule of thumb for the retail market to include a margin to give you the option to grow the product to support the product and to make it worthwhile then really you should be doubling up but i don't know i would love to know how much they actually cost they could cost 25 dollars. i don't know they could cost they 200 dollars i I literally then don't know. We sell, most of ours at we sell most of our stuff at cost or less. If you buy it from the web shop, it's actually it's out of our hands. So we just get a small. It's like drop shipping. So they just print a logo on a t-shirt and send it out. It's not really a great deal to do with us. Uh, Iru Wolfman says, "Is Linus getting too big for his boots? I wonder though. Maybe he should retire before he says something worse. Let someone else take over." Um. I think he, yeah. But he isn't LTT, is he? He is Linus Tech Tips. LTT Media is Linus. <laughs> as much as he'd like to say that he's got a team around him, I think if he disappeared or did something bad, I think they would struggle as a company without him, being that his name is part of the brand. Even as interesting as others may be, such as uh, Anthony or um, Luke. Luke's probably not so much sort of camera facing but they could probably get by without him but i think they would struggle he is the kind of the selling point of the brand um, is he getting too big for his boots i am slightly concerned about them going into doing the kind of the the more the labs testing especially when gamers nexus does it so well and have had such a massive head start now they've both said that the friendly rivalry is a friendly rivalry I don't think it is. I personally think that Steve from Gamers Nexus, and I'm just hyperballing here, so take it as you will. My impression, based on yesterday's Gamers Nexus video, is that Steve's pissed that Linus is trying to encroach on his domain that he shares quite happily with people like Hardware Unboxed, etc. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I think there's smiles and handshakes going on 
but internally I would imagine they're seething. Again, I don't know. I'm just completely going on body language and reactions and from what I can see, what I can deduct from it. And I think Steve is pissed. And they did take a little bit of a swipe at LTT by retrospectively adding additional warranty to their products, seven year warranty, and putting in right in to say exactly what the warranty is, which is kind of exactly what LTT didn't do. So yeah, it's I don't know, interesting times ahead. Uh, Tech Daniel Tester, I bought a PC, oops, sorry, I scrolled. I bought a PC case from a big company here in Sweden. I wanted to return unopened, but it took two to three weeks since it was a lot of strange rules. They really didn't take it seriously. Yeah, that is, some companies can be like that. It's unfortunate. I, when I worked in a PC shop, which was owned by an individual, it was an independent, and when somebody brought something back in, we would always say, um, rather than just swapping out or giving a refund, it would always be, well, we need to test it. And the customer would be like, well, why do you need to test it? I've told you it's faulty. It's like, well, yeah, but you've said it's faulty and you've used it. But as the retailer, we reserve the right to test products before we decide what's going to happen with them, whether they're going to be arm made, refunded, replaced. It could be just the fact that it's something in your configuration, which is wrong which is why the product doesn't work. So there's no fault with the product, it's just that you've got the wrong product or the wrong system. In which case, if you want to bring it back, there's going to be a handling charge because we are not a library. This We're trying to make a living. So there is that to it. So it's, it's tough, it's tough. Uh, Mark Point says, I don't think a bag should come with a warranty. Uh, any damage after two years is just wear and tear. I've had a bag since Halo 3 come out and the bag still lives. I've actually got my bag, which I used as a daily bag, which um, I've had for, it's an Adidas bag, and I've had that for at least 10 years. It's got, yeah. At least 10 off. years. And it's so annoying, it's like- And it still works. One strap thing. It's a, it's it's a strap awful. bag that goes over, and it's, yeah, it's awful, and it slips off my shoulders every day like when I use it. Every day, once a week. Once a week, yeah. But it's like left-handed one or something because you've just got the, if you put it over your shoulder as a right-handed person, it's just hanging in front of you. Yeah. Uh, David Andrell says Linus is basically a sole trader with staff. It kind of is. He, I don't think it's Linus... same as your channel. Yeah, same as us, really. I don't think that they're going to float on the stock exchange. They might do. I think they probably like the control they've got over their company. But it's like your channel, if anything happened to you. Well, yeah, if anything happened to me, this channel's history. Uh, John Sullivan says, I would much rather trust Gamers Nexus testing methodology. I'll be honest with you, I'm kind of, yeah. I, I don't know. But then you've got, they've both got their own viewers yeah. with their own yeah, they've got their, personalities. They've, as well. And they've kind of got their own niches. If they turned around and started doing things more like Gamers Nexus. I think that would be a little bit of a slap in the face. But I think Gamers Nexus... They should Nexus work on it, doing it differently. would just stick with him anyway. Well, I think that you don't need to choose one or the other. It's always good. The more reviews are, the better. So you can check out loads of different channels' reviews and see which one, or see if any of them in particular stand out as being wildly different from the others. Um, I quite often find, actually, especially on release day, whenever there's a new product released, you'll see probably the same maybe 10, 15 YouTube channels, all doing the same review. And generally, I take that with a pinch of salt. I wait until the product's been out a little while and a few other different YouTubers have done it who've actually gone out and either spent their own money or have waited a little bit because those day one reviews generally are all going to be either sponsored or paid to some extent. So there's always that kind of you may trust the, the channel, but they may not be inclined to be as positive or negative, depending on how the video is sponsored or how they've come about the parts. It's just a fact of life. It's, they're not being um, mischievous or dishonest or um, any of those other words. It's just the way that things are. If you're a 
company was being sponsored, like Jay's Two Cents. If he had an EVJ card come in or EVJ products and it was it sucked, it's not in his interest to slate it. He could omit some of the bad sides of a product if he wanted to, but it would be no sense of him coming out saying, this is the worst product I've ever seen. Because then EVJ would be like, well, okay, fuck you. Not having any more of that. So, yeah, you have got to be uh, a little bit careful. I'm the same if, if, especially earlier videos, I did feel inclined to say more positive things about something which had been sent to me free of charge. And also stuff that gets sent to me, like if Ugly Bob or William Bodie or anyone sends me something of their own or that they bought for the channel, it's really hard for me to review it with a 100% clear conscience because at the back of my mind, I'm always thinking, this was donated to the channel. So I can't be like massively, hugely critical because that's basically just pissing on your chips, which I don't want to do. So I have to be careful about saying, well, this could be done better or this isn't something that I would do personally or this isn't something that I can live with or work with rather than like letting rip on it, which I have done before with, uh, especially with the Q300L and the Masterbox Lite 3.1. I, I did let go with those a little bit. Those were bad cases. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Rick H says, I've purchased multiple products from your reviews. Me too. <laughs> Some of them more than once. Uh, uh, John Sullivan says, Gamers Nexus were very open about their setup and development on their office space, which goes a long way. Yeah, I think, to be fair, Steve from Gamers Nexus, he is... He does well. He appears to be a very genuine individual, and he's kind of he's come more from that background of writing um, back in the day magazine reviews and publishing and all that kind of stuff. So he's kind of got a very good grounding in it to begin with. So the transition for him from being a reviewer into a personality, straight reviewer, whatever, has been quite an easy one for him to do. And he hasn't had to change his ethics, which is I think is great. Aletta says, why is defrosting my mini fridge so much messier than defrosting a normal sized fridge? Because a normal sized fridge will defrost at a much slower rate, so you get less water in the same time. Like you know anything about defrosting? It's thermodynamics, because you've got a smaller body of um, energy, effectively. So a, a small thing melts quicker than a large thing, because of its smaller mass. Show me. I, tomorrow I will get a massive ice cube and stick it on the desk no, no. next to a little one. A little one will be gone. By doing the freezer. Okay. Uh, Lucky Man says, I'm still using the same boxers from when I came out of the army, but they never used to be camo design. <laughs> At least sand camo. Uh, where else are we? Right. Uh, Kenny D says, does anyone know of any good deals on RX 6600 XT or 6600? Uh, if you go over to, well, if you're in the UK, there were some really good deals on our Discord. I think there was one, £270, £273 RX 6600. So I assume it's a good deal. Looks like a good deal. Anything under £300 is worth looking at. Uh, Mr. E says, will you be trying to get your hands on a 4000 series GPU? Um, I don't know. I'll see what the reviews are like first. If it makes sense to get one, then I probably will do. There's a very strong chance that either MSI or Zotac might send me one for sampling. Um, that would be good if they can, but it probably won't be on the first review cycle. It'll be a little bit later. He's darkening me up. Silly boy. Uh, David Andrew says, Steve has all the hair that Mike has lost. If if he starts getting stressed out, you'll see it coming out. It'll go grey, then it'll start falling out. 
Uh, Tech Daniel Tester says, what do you think about LTT headphone testing head? Um, I think it's a good idea to actually be able to replicate exactly what noises are coming out of a headphone makes uh, a lot of sense. And I think it would be actually genuinely quite helpful to kind of get an idea of what is going on. Headphone reviews are always a really difficult one. I actually did one this week uh, from some headphones that were sent to us from Creative, the new uh, Zen Hybrid. And it was really difficult to try and get across the sound that I was hearing, especially with the SX5 enabled, which is, does incredible things to music. So yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's a good. I think it would be interesting to see how they incorporate it into the reviews, in terms of graphs or things. Because the thing is, we will hear differently as well, depending on the shape of your ear canal. A bassy set of headphones to me may sound tinny to you. So there isn't like a these are bassy. It's these are bassy to me, but they might not be to you. But also, some fit your ear right in. Yeah. Some Kenny D, I bought the Vitro V5 because of your review on it. Shame I don't use it anymore since I switched on AIO. Yeah, the Vitro V5 is a pretty good cooler, actually. It's a shame, really, that Vitro didn't follow up with something. The the V6 or V whatever the next one was that came out was good, but it seemed a little bit overpriced when they came out with the Vitro V5. I think they did it deliberately at a very, very, very low price to generate a little bit of momentum, and it appears to have worked for them. Uh, Aletta says, when it comes to YouTube tech channels, I trust Tech Jesus, Hardware Unboxed, and Mike. Oh, bless you. That's very kind of you. I would argue that the other two put in a lot more work than I do, but we'll get there. They've got a head start on me. And hair. And hair, yes. Uh, Nicholas Barlow's coming there with the uh, Amazon US, 241.99 for a warehouse 6600GB uh, Eagle. Sounds pretty good. James Miscellaneous says, I'm with you, but I add in Paul and Greg. Yeah, I've got, I'm actually starting to like Greg Salazar more than I did. I don't know why. Just I'm enjoying his content more. Um, Paul, for sure, definitely. Bitwit's good at times. Uh, William Bodie says, Mike, when will we see a photo of you with hair from way back then? Um, I have posted them on Discord a few times. I'll see what I can find. It's easy when you get used to it. Tell him. Yeah, it is easy when you get used to it. William. William. If I can use it. Just give it a week or so of using it and you'll soon be used to it. James from Sinanus says, my son is nine and smarter than me. Well, he must be exceptionally smart, because you are a smart cookie. Uh, Irie Wolfman says, overclockers, I have a power colour of Radeon RX 6600 fighter, 8 gig for 248. Seems pretty good. Uh, actually, I should make a confession. I've got three videos coming out. Uh, in the very near future with the RTX 3050. Uh, three different models, which you saw on the stream last week. So the ASUS, the MSI, and the Zotac. I already know that I'm going to get some harsh criticism on them because they're not a particularly good option to buy. Now, take the review as it is. They're 1080p Ultra cards. Inherently, they're not bad cards. They're just bad prices. And it seems even a couple of days after recording the videos, the 6600 has got even lower in price and has become more and more of a go-to card. And I can see that increasing. I can't see the RTX 350 getting much cheaper. So, um, yeah. I, I'm i not going to say I apologise, because what I said in the videos at the time of making them was 100% my thoughts on it, I did say actually that the RT, uh, sorry, the RX 6600 is possibly going to be a better buy anyway if you don't want RTX and DLSS and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, it was it was a very tough thing, especially doing three of them all on the bounce because they all performed almost identically. 
there was very very little in between them in terms of actual kind of out of the box settings i would have liked to have been able to keep all three of them a bit longer to be able to do overclocking on them to see which ones can be pushed the highest but realistically i don't think many people these days actually overclock their graphics card they rely on it just to be able to do what it can out of the box which most nvidia cards will with the um thermals being right they'll boost up to wherever they can and even with them boosting higher than others it still makes very very little difference at this end so yeah it's a very very unusual time of the market and it's not getting much better so yeah they are what they are uh twig hiker says uh, only watch your lives and vids along with the random gaming guy oh thank you i like down to earth reviewers and i challenge anyone to be a tech reviewer with over 100k followers who remains down to earth i feel that is going to be an issue going forward we've probably got another year or so before we hit 100k but we've been doing this for like four or five years now and i don't think it really changed a great deal the quality of the videos has changed a little bit not actually yeah, it, has, it has massively improved but then as we've technology has as well so we don't yeah we, we don't have things falling off the shelves so much as what we did um yes we'll try and stay down to earth we'll do what we can to stay down to earth being that we are where we are it kind of does bring me it grounds me i think youtubers who buy a studio or move into a studio is always that kind of that internal I've made it kind of thing. So they do change their personalities a little bit. But I can't see us doing that. Uh, Rick H says you should start next week's stream by wearing a long hair wig. Am I? Uh, someone just asked about the Asus card. Oh, O'Reilly says, so the Asus RTX 3050 was the worst of the bunch. Pro I would say probably yes. It's all based on price. If the Asus card was cheaper than the Zotac, it would be better. Between the Asus and the Zotac, essentially there's no real difference. The Zotac is a more premium looking product and feels more premium. Um, arguably slightly quieter, but very, very fractional. The only one that's really stood out as being much cooler, much quieter was the MSI, because it's, it's massive, but then it's much more expensive. So it's a hard one, but yeah, the, the Zotac and the Asus probably, knock for knock, the Asus loses out because it's a bit dearer and a little bit uglier. To me, if you're on, if you're looking at the actual looks of the cards, uh, William Bode is on Discord now. Where do I look? Somebody link Ugly Bob up to some pictures. Uh, to uh, William Bode. I will for my next year's segue. Today's sponsor is Mike's Boxers. <laughs> God, yeah. I have actually considered doing that, doing some sort of merch stuff, but it's. It is such a nightmare. It really is. It, it's kind of cool and for people to do it, but yeah, it's, it's a lot of effort for minimal, minimal returns. In fact, losses generally. Normally I'll write it off his tax. Uh, Twig Hiker says, the thing is, Mike, you're not afraid to have a beer, throw an F word in there because uh, well, you've seen that, never change that. Yeah, that is, to be honest with you, the F word thing, it, the beginning with the live streaming and videos, it was one of those things that YouTube were like, like, don't swear. If you swear, it'll pick up on the algorithm, blah, 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 and your videos won't get shown. Then there were some changes to the algorithm and I actually made it so that if you did throw the odd curse in now and then, it would classify your content as being not for children so then your content would be shown to adults and get better ad revenue. Because you can't advertise to kids, so kids don't see YouTube adverts, or at least not ones which aren't relevant to them. So yes, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a very weird thing. So sometimes you just throw in a curse just 
for the algorithm's sake, even if you uh, don't consciously do it. I have done that once, twice. So I've when you're streaming or making a video, you're always kind of you're trying to be a couple of seconds ahead of what you're actually saying in your mind, so that it can flow. So you get used to almost, especially in streaming, you get used to the kind of like you're about to say something and you hold back because you know you can't say a word. So especially with obviously the things that have been going on in the United States recently, the things which have been going on around the world recently to do with the um, the thing, like stuff like that, you have to be really careful and you can't just blurt it out because otherwise YouTube potentially could put like a fact checker on your video, which means, see again, you're unlikely to see ad revenue and stuff. So it's, it's a bit of a nightmare. You can't say what you want on that YouTube, but it's close, I suppose. Uh, Alexa says, this is the only live stream I take part in. The people on this channel feels more like a family. We are like a really weirdly disjointed family around the world. Uh, Name 89 says, well, this has turned into a long stream. It has. It's almost three hours, God's sake. I'm trying to test my voice because my throat is still playing up. And I want to see how long I can talk for about it just basically dying on me altogether. Sorry for the test subjects. <laughs> so, yeah, sorry for the test. It is supposed to be. They are. Test. Yeah, it's a test stream. Uh, Matthew Day says, don't mention the war. No, definitely don't mention the war. Oh, crap. Uh -oh. <laughs> Which one? Uh, James Miscellaneous says, tell MSI to bring back the armor theme black and white video cars to bring over and bring over the same to motherboards. Yeah, the armor. Um, well, armor was supposed to be a subsidiary of the the traditional, like, uh, bazooka, tomahawk. Um, what was the other one? There's there's a quite a few weapony sort of named boards. I'm trying to think, what was it? Tomahawk, bazooka. There was another one, wasn't there? Oh god, I can't think what it is. But yeah, it was all supposed to be part of that kind of army type themed or weapon type thing. But I don't know why they've not done that. I quite like the armour, Brandon. Uh. <laughs> Thanks, lucky man. Uh, I often says, don't mention Brexit. No. Well, Brexit's never really happened, I don't think. It hasn't turned out to be what we thought it might have been. Order and says we're all family. Does that make me cousin it? <laughs> oh no. Ah, David under a mortar. Thank you. Yeah. Torpedo. Tomahawk. Bazooka. Mortar. I'm sure there was another one as well. I think what the other one was. There's quite a few. Motherboard names are getting stupid. The new uh, X670 Extreme Extreme boards are good. I like that. It's just, uh, yeah, absolutely bizarre. There'll be some interesting names and reviews coming out on that. Right, I think we should uh, wrap things up there because it is getting on a bit and I've... Uh, carbon, thank you, John Sullivan. The, um, yeah, I've dragged the hell out of this stream, I'll be honest with you. But thank you all for joining us on your Saturday evening. Uh, hopefully, during the week, I'll get the card working properly. And I'll be able to seamlessly swap, swap between layouts, which will be good. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll get it to, to work properly without me having to want to punch myself, which may be the case. Anyway, that's going to wrap things up for now. Uh, thank you all for joining us on your Saturday evening. We will look forward to seeing you in uh, the weekly streams, uh, weekly streams, the weekly videos. Monday's one is going to be an interesting one if you want to undervolt your uh, motherboard, especially in the temperatures. Although 
we're headed for thunderstorms, I think, next week. Uh, a little bit of rain, still very hot, and thunderstorms. So there is something really uh, good to look forward to. Also, on Thursday, the video will be an hour late because it is going to be a embargo video, which we've been told we cannot release until 9 a.m. in the morning. On Thursday, the 18th, I believe it is. I'll have to double check that. So yeah, keep an eye out for that one. Uh, it's 29.8 degrees, so it's basically 30 degrees in here still. And I'm actually quite chuffed that I'm surviving and I haven't got sweat dripping. I think I'm getting climatized into it now. So when the temperatures do eventually drop, it's going to be like, bloody hell, I was freezing. Where's my hoodie? <coughs> uh, yes, I think that is going to wrap things up. Thank you very much, and uh, we will catch you in the next video. I've got to remember to end these streams now. It's definitely not that one. <laughs> Thanks for watching all, and uh, 